now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Puckle. Welcome to another episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my spectacular co-host. We've got the one and only, definitely maybe not a lord, Seth Vilo. It depends on which YouTube videos you've watched recently, but yes, I still count that I am one. (laughs) You have a certificate. It counts, okay? I got it from the people that weren't in that video. I got them from a much more reliable source, so ha 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 ha. (laughs) <laughs> with that uh scottish law i think literally says you can't do it though <laughs> but different law no laws yeah. don't apply to me remember yeah because he's a lord or... yeah because i'm a lord god <laughs> all right and we've co- of course got the uh the labs coming from shark finnegan hello welcome to the puckle podcast puckle of course standing for the pokemon underground champions league where we talk everything pokemon from the training card game to the video game to everything in between I'm very excited today because this is a competitive episode, our one of month competitive episode. We get to talk about Scarlet and Violet competitive, which is Woo-hoo! very, very, very exciting. Oh, very. Yeah. Uh, it is unstable. So, like, I am not stupid, stupid well versed in it right now because I like to take a step back, especially from OU, right when the game comes out, because things take a little bit to stabilize. Because there's always, like, that one influencer now that's just like, this is really good, and then everybody plays it. But then there's just, like, one really obvious <laughs> answer that people forget. Sitting yeah. off in the corner, and then people start mm. playing it, and they're like, oh, that's the new best thing. And so it rotates for, like, four or five cycles until it, it like, finally settles. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's already happened a couple of times, unsurprisingly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it's just, like, some of the mechanics are stuff we're still learning and discovering. Exactly. Exactly. There's quite a few of those that have happened here. Yeah. We just learned something this week about how terrorization, like, apparently ups your like any move below 60 base power oh my gosh 60 with some exceptions there's a few exceptions but yeah oh my gosh we're still parsing the things of this yeah yeah oh man yeah it's a whole thing i mean i haven't spent a lot of time doing like video game because we've got arlington next week yeah yeah which is definitely been taking up my time with tcg but I am very excited once it's all over to play. I honestly might do it beforehand because I found out that the event is doing a uh, on day two of the regional. Yeah, they're holding a VGC competition. Oh, are they? I'm like, really? I did get 15th place at that one regional that one time. <laughs> oh, please. and and I was just like, man, maybe on Sunday I should go and play play. You know. In the uh, in that because I'm probably not making in the it little to day VGC two. side event. Yeah, it's cool. And so I was like, maybe I should start playing a little bit of VGC again right now and like get myself well versed with like what's going on so that I can yeah. show up for that. That would so be cool. Yep. Uh, so I'm thinking I I might do that this week. Just like futz around with it a little bit in between TCG live matches. For sure. Yeah. Because I I think I might do it. I I'm very excited for it. But that's what I'm doing. What about you guys? Anything fun? I've been just kind of doing most much of the same thing that you've been doing, Thatch. Just I know Arlington prep. Well, we did it. You together. and I did that. <laughs> yeah, we did that one thing on camera here earlier this week. That was a whole ton of fun. That was actually really nice. Yeah, I'm really upset because I I, w- I think it would have been really good stream content. It could have been, yeah. And it was very difficult because of the way that like OBS and cameras like to share their sources. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately. It was uh, it was very very difficult to be able to share it. Uh, I did figure it out at the end, which really pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. How to actually do it? And I was like, oh man, we could have just done this the whole time. The good part is that we got a lot of like actual practicing with yeah. a whole bunch of random decks and got that muscle memory down. So when yep. it comes to actually playing, we'll be able to shuffle properly. It was it was good practice that we both needed a good amount yeah. of. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Maybe it'll be a fun stream this week, or if hey. nothing else, come to the Discord and maybe you get to watch that happen live here. Uh, it, it might actually happen again this week because I'm not against that. Doing it again. <laughs> I'm not against doing it again this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm there's plenty more regionals to go, and I'm going to a lot of them. So yeah, 
I, I'm going to. I'm still planning on going to a couple more. I'm I'm more anticipating like local events because yeah. at this point I don't think I'll, I'll like obviously get a world invite because there's not enough events around mm-hmm. to realistically uh-huh. do that, which is fine. And I don't think it's a realistic goal to try to set up, especially for like the first time you try to do it. Well, you only need to win two and a half regional events. Yeah, right. To a world you only invite. need to re- win two and a half regionals. That's a very reasonable goal. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I have just been like, well, I'll just wait for locals and I'll play in a lot of locals this year just to play competitively a little bit more. Right. Because like it's even it's really bad. Like I'll go to league and it's just because I haven't played anything like Uber competitive in a while in person. But like mm-hmm. because like I used to I used to this is really nerdy and like lets uh lets people into a little bit of thatch insight that they've never had. <laughs> but I used to like bowl competitively. Oh yeah, Ooh, you've mentioned that like in yeah. just regular. Yeah, I I used to bowl competitively. I'm actually pretty decent at bowling. Uh which is just like, oh, wow, that's that's a that's a game. I'll call bowling a sport, but I won't call myself an athlete. That's the way I'll phrase that. That's probably a good way to describe it. I did yeah. I did some bowling in high school, not super well, but I did I did yeah. pretty decently. Yeah, I was I was actually so like to become a professional bowler is actually pretty easy. It turns out and I was, like, on the cusp of actually being able to, like, join the PBA. Ooh. Well, yeah, but okay, it doesn't sound, it's not as prestigious as it sounds, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not like, it's not like that, pre- like, you join the PBA so you can go play, like, harder bowling, essentially. Mm-hmm. And because, like, they changed, like, the oil patterns and stuff, it's a whole thing. Uh, but, so. The oil, what? <laughs> Seth, this isn't the right podcast for this. This, this is a different. This language. isn't. This is. This isn't buckle. Okay, this is puckle. Okay. Buckle. <laughs> buckle podcast. Oh my god! Go ahead. Go ahead. I just that threw me but, off. But the only reason I bring that up is because, like, when you get into those like tense situations, like you get that you get that feeling, you know, like that butterfly, that like adrenaline feeling. Uh huh. Yeah. And like this might make me a junkie or something in terms of adrenaline, but like I miss that, and I get that with the Pokemon game with the TCG in person <laughs> because yep. I, I, part of it's also like imposter syndrome too, right? Because For sure, because I, I don't think I'm good at it. Um, I tell myself all the time, like I'm probably not as good as the people that come and do this every week, right? Yeah. And then when you get to beat them, you feel like a little good, and if you get close to beating them, you feel really good. Yeah, honestly. So uh, that that's kind of like why I want to keep doing it just like a little bit, just to have like a little bit of competitiveness left. Yeah. Left in me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Shark, what have you been doing for, have you been like prepping for Pokemon Go really hard? Like, have you been tapping or did you buy like a resistance band? <laughs> I honestly should be t- doing more of that, but I have not. <laughs> I've been playing more cart than Go. Than- <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we've got decks for you to play when he comes, though. So. Heck yeah. Yep. So the big things that I've been doing, I've been flying around and ra- doing raids uh, in the trades and raids Discord. Channel, okay. Okay. Coordinating with them, mainly being the support guy because I've built a, like two Grim Snarls just to kind of nice. be able to be that support okay. when we do those six star raids and let mm-hmm. someone else be the Iron Hands and Belly Drum around. Yeah, yeah. And plus, it's usually better online because I'm more likely to get the screen up before the. Well, the belly drum guy all would have died otherwise. <laughs> Don't set up a defense boost first, but that's near here to there. I've also done uh, some VGC laddering, which has been fun. I've been just kind of getting some real teams just to kind of play around with, kind of slowly get my way up. I think I'm like Pokeball 5 right now. I think it's where I got to before we started recording. Not mm-hmm. bad. Yep. And then I've been doing some little draft tours. Just to kind of get some idea of just how terastalizing is going to work in the draft format stuff. So just playing around with a couple different things there. So Yeah, man, it's exciting. Yeah, I, I'm excited. It's next week we're going to be there, too. So I guess mm-hmm. the three of us and Shami will all be there. That'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be fun. I'm excited to play around with all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're in Arlington Regionals, don't be scared to say hi. Yeah. I know, I know a couple other people are going to meet us there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I I don't know how many others, but yeah, just come say hi. I think I'm going to be using the uh, the puckle playmat. Are just you for the regular tournament? I think I am. I think I am. Why not? You know? Yeah, uh, I might. I don't know. I'd have to bring it. I I got That's a nice my... custom one made, but so I got this like <laughs> nice custom one made with uh with like a lugia and a ho. It's like my favorite art. And but the problem was I went to a local the other day and like I put it down on the table because like it's just a really nice mat and I really like it. 
And the guy goes, the guy goes, oh, I assume you're playing Lugia because you have exactly. The Lugia and I go, I go, oh, no. I now I can't use my mat when I go That's to the regional. The exact <laughs> same reason. That's the exact same reason I'm doing because mine's like the sable eye coffee art, and I yeah. don't want to give away any information. I'm sitting here like I'm sitting here like, oh man, now I'm just gonna Crumped. use the regional mat. <laughs> <laughs> the one guy at Toronto that was great. Uh, I saw a picture of it on Twitter in like a summary. I think he was playing Lost Box, but he had with him a little tiny Archeops plushie that he would just put like. Next I, to okay, his deck box. see, that's a silly thing to do. I I was thinking about <laughs> doing that actually, like bringing like a little charm for like a completely different deck. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Threw off a whole lot of his opponents when he flipped over a comfy and like what what. <laughs> No, not even that. Okay, so, like, my favorite thing to do is, like, you do something like that, and then you get the bad hand, opening hand. Yeah. And you have to, and you have to start Mana Fee, right? And you're going second. Uh-huh, they don't know yet. And then they don't know it, but they just assume, and they start playing, <laughs> like, for this other deck, and they start doing their setup for another deck matchup, and then you just go, ha-ha! <laughs> but guess I'm what, I'm Lost Box. <laughs> guess what, I'm not playing that. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be hilarious, actually. Yeah. But, yeah, no, you no, probably man. should real quick. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, I'm definitely probably, I'm not I'm so upset cuz I'm not going to I'm definitely not using that play mat. I know. Yeah. I'm definitely I'm using some other play mat. I don't know what maybe kind of play mat. Maybe in the side events, at least not the maybe the main Oh, in the side events, yeah. I mean, I my intention's to try and maybe do all nine rounds in the tournament. I haven't I it really depends on how badly I do, right? <laughs> yeah. And the last time I told myself I was going to do that at the regional, I ended up going 6 and 2. Uh and yeah, <laughs> they have. That's, yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna. I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. In all honesty, uh, because I've been prepping for it up really, really hard, and I don't expect that everybody's prepped for it as hard as I have. But there's always the chance that I just like run into toward round one and right, and then run into you know somebody else that's like good at the game round two. You can't shuffle your deck because your hands are shaking too much. You're in front of a. <laughs> Pokemon TCG God. So the good news is, I just won't read my opponent's name, and <laughs> I don't recognize any of them. Oh, so, yeah, that'll that's do a good it. There way you to go. Do it too, yeah. It's like unless it's yeah, you because know, not I like don't have you would that see luxury. like Wolfie or anyone yeah. like that. It's like you have like there's not yeah. gonna be as many like oh obviously it's you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know a lot. I know I know a lot of names because I've done a lot of prep. But yeah. I've sat diagonal in one turn in one regional from Azul. I've sat diagonal from Tablemon in one regional. Like I've seen Tord a couple tables over, seen Celio. Like I, I, it's fun. It's yeah. fun to be there with people who are like well known and things like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't want us to talk too much about the regional next week. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not going to be. We're just here. excited. We're, yeah, none of us are going to be on the show next week. They can deal with yeah. it. Um, <laughs> the. People next week can just like listen to our live tweets about how poorly we're doing and <laughs> can give live updates. Hello, folks. This is the first intro in two years where it hasn't been about that, just DCG experience. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 well, then, then I'm going to get crushed and we're never going to talk about it again, right? So, right. Exactly. You'll never go to another one. <laughs> all, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and we are going to, we're going to cut it here. And we're going to go ahead and talk uh, some news. There's some exciting news to talk about today. Yeah. So let's uh, oh, yeah. key that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower. This just in. Welcome to the new. Did you like that? <laughs> that was good. Yeah, there's some news to talk about. Obviously, um, in Scarlet and Violet, Charizard is back, baby. Yeah, he's coming back. Uh, plenty of strategies exist now. You can just bring his Doomeril if it works this time. Yeah, fairies go a long way, and fairies that resist fire help even more. Wow, that is a Zoomeril. No, use the do use uh, uh, uh Doxbund. Doxbund with yeah. ability shield. Ability shield is one of the things that keep you know when you Ooh. go to that point in the raid where it's like oh the enemy Charizard resets your stats and nullifies oh. your abilities. Well, ability yep. shield protects you from that. So you so basically Doc Spawn only takes Hurricane. That's only the only thing it really has to worry. about. Yep. So thus far, I really, really, really like um, what Sword and, or not Sword and Shield, Scarlet and Violet are doing <laughs> with the raids. 
No, I really okay. So like we can complain about timer all we want with yeah, uh, um, but I think that with the raids they've created a new way that you have to actually build Pokemon for it. It's interesting, yeah. And oh, so, yeah. And, and I might not be building an OU team in on cart, but I do have to build particular mons to take on these big raids, even the six star ones, which are just standard in your game, mm-hmm. and which I really like. I really like that, um, and I hope they keep it up. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I have a few kind of evergreen. The thing I like, I think Grimmsnarl is probably going to be the best evergreen type Pokemon. Oh, absolutely. Like that with that basically a Pokemon that is bulky. That, ha- that can set up yes. screens is going to be huge. I think just generally in all these hard raids, having someone to do that. Mm-hmm. No, I really like that they're doing this, though. I think it's a great, like, I just think it's a great way to inspire competitive Pokemon building um, outside of competitive Pokemon, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, like, optimized Pokemon builds. And I mean, the rewards for these are really good. It gave us yeah. a lot of a lot of XP candy, which helps fuel a lot of yes. future raid mons, which is great. And calcium. It's so exciting. I really like these. Like, I hope they keep them up after Charizard, because I don't think they've announced anything post-Charizard yet, right? I think there were a couple that happened, like, this weekend that we're recording, which is Salamence and Tyranitar. Yes, that yeah. is true. That is true. They did that one week of, so... Yeah, I hate that they're doing that again. Don't do that, please. It's a little... <laughs> it's better than the bit, like, before it starts. It's at least better that we had a whole yeah that's you know, true like three to five days to build something but yeah that's true i wish they would do them throughout the week instead of just on the weekend i wish that's my only that's my only qualm but you gotta try some of the normal stuff too but yeah no i don't disagree i personally just me i kind of like weekend more but then you know all right well let's move on from talking about raids yeah, yeah. uh so the competitive uh poke our play pokemon has released a bunch of uh, competitive play rule update. The big news from it is that BGC will now be featuring open team sheet, which yes. basically is Ooh. when you go to get your rental code, you know, that you show it shows you all the moves, your terror type, etc. Mm-hmm. That basically that is the all the open information that your opponent you will know about your opponent. I'm really okay with that. Yeah. We'll probably go into this more in the topic too because that's yeah. pertinent to the competitive It changes a lot actually. It changes a lot. Yeah. It does. So you get a little sampler, a little sampler of what the topic is here in the news. Yeah, it You're changes welcome. a lot. So I, I'm very, it's like, it's like the biggest thing they've done since Platinum with Team Preview in general. Like, uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's very big. All right. Well, let's talk about some uh, TCG, everybody's favorite part of the show, according to the survey. Uh- <laughs> All right. So we have had our first official revealed cards from the Scarlet and Violet set, which will be releasing in Japan on January 20th. And everywhere else, like March 31st ish. Yeah, yeah like I think that. it's that date exactly. End of March. It's so it's long. It's a very long way away. It's a month later than it normally is mm-hmm. or so. So, oh well, we have to give Crown Zenith its, ta- its chance to shine. But there are some interesting things in there. There is a terrestrialization mechanic, which we've seen one and we know another is coming. Mm-hmm. It, the one we've seen is Arcanine EX with the Terra ability that blocks damage while it's on the bench. So it's kind of like its own built-in bench barrier. Yeah. We are unsure as a community right now if every terrestrialized Pokemon will feature that Terra power or whatever. Because yeah. it's not an ability. It's a separate rule box. It's not shut off by Path to the Peak, for instance. It's not a rule box, it's just a Terra effect, similar to how ancient traits on those cards were not turned off by ability block. So it's built in, it'll always be immune to damage while on the bench. We don't know if all of them are going to be like that. Maybe only Arcanine is like that. Maybe only fire types have that one, and all the other types have something else. We don't know yet. But we have seen from the booster pack arc that we were also getting a water type terrestrialized Gyarados in this Ooh. set. So we'll see what comes next but we've seen the first set and scarlet violet looks exciting i think you've got a couple things on that right that uh i mean yes i mean we got i mean i don't want to say these are scarlet violet this is just like tcg changes and yeah to the layman they're not exciting um, <laughs> but yeah oh uh, like to the layman it could be i mean the p- random person who picks up a pack will be like "Ooh, can i get a charizard again so so one of these is very exciting for the lay or just the pokemon tcg collector um, I'm going to save that one for last, but 
they made a lot of press releases because with Scarlet and Violet, they're changing a lot of things about Pokemon cards. Yes, uh, themselves. Um, first is being I, for those of you who don't like pay too much attention to the TCG, but you know what the cards look like. They look like you know your picture with your yellow border, unless it's like one of those fancy full arts. It's or like a V or a V Max or an EX or whatever. They did. They did. Yeah. They usually have the ugly yellow border because Pokemon said this is what we want. It actually turns out that like I forget when exactly Japan did this. I believe it was in black and white. Um, in black and white or somewhere around there. In Japan, they switched the borders from yellow to silver. And a lot of the artwork that we get on a lot of these Pokemon cards from a collector standpoint um, looks very good with the silver border and the yellow border just makes it look like a Fisher Price toy. <laughs> it does. It really does. You can get some really pretty cards with the silver border, though. A really good example is actually with Crown Zenith. There's a card in there, this full art Altaria. And not full art, but alt art. That's full card. Um, and the yellow, yeah. the Japanese version looks wonderful with the silver border. You put the yellow border around it, it looks awful. Yellow is a loud color. Yes. And it turns out that the Pokemon company has heard us that we think the yellow is making the uh, cards ugly. And all <laughs> the yellow border is no more. We're getting the silver border. That was a very long sentence to tell you the cards are now silver on the edges. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> which is changes the cards and is, I think they're going to look better as a result. Yeah. One other thing, like on the card format itself, there's a couple other parts yes. to that as well that are different. Uh, one is that basic energies are labeled. Mm -hmm. uh, they say on the card basic whatever type energy. So that'll be a lot more friendly towards new users who see on card text if the basic energy is yes. attached and wonder what the heck is that. I think that's required because the number of people that don't understand what a basic energy is because it's never yeah. been like printed on a card. Yeah, they don't. There's no official wording like on the cards themselves. If you just are handed a pack that says this is a basic and this is a special, they are different. So yep. this is good. I like it. The mm -hmm. type of trainer card that it is, you know how there are items, there are supporters, there are tools. The type of trainer card is now swapping places on the card so you can see it better when you have them fanned out mm -hmm. in a typical way that people hold their hand so they've swapped sides so you can see more easily what the items are in your hand what the supporters are in your hand or like you're doing a deck search you can mm -hmm. count easier that way there is no more set logo they've done away with the set logos that have been accompanying these for a long time i'm sad for the etbs yeah that's kind of sad yeah because the cool dice with the logo on it are gone yeah i know Unless they just do a logo for the dice anyway. Okay. But, like, formalized set logos on the cards are gone and replaced with what the set number is, which will make it very easy to fill out in-person deck sheets mm -hmm. and make it so that those deck sheets don't necessarily have to be updated as frequently. They can just give the instruction of, like, fill out what the number is on the bottom of your card and write it in the box as opposed to having to, every three months, come out with a new PDF that lists the set logo and what its official abbreviation is. It'll make it so that maybe, just maybe, we could have one deck sheet yeah, a right. year, which is great. Right. Yeah. Uh, additionally, uh, I, th this is really tiny news, but tool cards are listed separately from item cards now. They were always like a subset yes. of items. Which I think is also necessary because it is kind of hard to tell unless you know yes. that something's a tool card. Um so I, I do really, really appreciate that. Yeah. One, this is also applying retroactively, too. There'll be an mm -hmm. errata for that. So all old tool cards are no longer considered items. They are considered tools. Oh, trainer Could you imagine tools. for item lock? That's going to kill item lock. Precisely. Um, Someone in uh, Discord pointed that out this morning before we got on. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even think of that. So, yeah. yeah. All right. And then I think the biggest news about the Pokemon, TV, because even if you do yeah. not play the TCG, this is just like really, really cool if you collect and you just pick up packs every once in a while. So they are increasing the price of packs about 50 cents. I think they're going from four bucks to 450. And mm -hmm. they said because uh, because these packs are uh, going up in price, we want to increase the value of the pack that you get from it, um, which one tells me they were being stingy before. And then two, <laughs> that, uh, that I mean, it's good for us because it, uh, I didn't realize until this happened, like how uh how generous other trading card games were right uh, because uh so in, if you open a c pack of tcg cards now you'll get 10 cards and you'll get a reverse hollow every time and then you'll get a rare and that rare has a chance of being a hollow or not hollow rare um now yeah. they said no 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 every pack is gonna have three hollow rares 
and there's no such thing as a non hollow rare anymore. Right. Which is very exciting. I mean, you're opening every pack and you are getting three hits per pack. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that's oh, that's real. That's great. I'm like, yeah, you're like guaranteed three hits. I love it. I'm here for it. I'm curious what the third one is because, like, one is the reverse hollow, one is I, the rare I, hollow, and what's the third one? Just I a think, random? I think they just put in, I think you just get two rares. Two rare, well, you get three rares. You're guaranteed three rares in a pack, right? Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's what they said. You're guaranteed three rares in a pack from the press release. So, oh, they didn't okay. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, if I hope we get reverse hollows, because reverse hollows, if we get the Japanese reverse hollows, I'll be so much happier. Um, that's they, cool too, yeah. they are way mm-hmm. better than the American reverse hollow or the English reverse hollow. Um, and I think a lot of these hollows, the foil type that they're going back to for Scarlet and Violet is that OG Galaxy foil oh, that we love so much. I do love that foil. Either way, this is very exciting if you just like want to pick up a pack of yeah. Pokemon cards because there's no more duds. There's yeah, just no oh, more yeah. duds. There's no, like I like hyped up all of this news to my wife the wrong way yesterday because, because <laughs> oh, like no. she really likes opening the packs, right? And so the first That's thing dangerous. I sent her, the first thing I did was I sent her a picture of a Sprigatito card. I go, look, the borders aren't yellow, and her response was okay. And then oh, I, and yeah. so I did, it, and so like I was just like, oh, she didn't th- want to hear about this. And then I got home and I'm like, yeah, a bunch of Pokemon TCG stuff. She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you like the most exciting part. Uh, three hollows in every pack now. Hey, um, <laughs> it turns out though that this is just like this is literally like Pokemon just like finally catching up to the rest of trading card games. Yeah, I, I found out because like Digimon apparently just has two rares in every pack. Yeah, um, and, and other like I guess One Piece is that a game people play? That it's a probably I, uh, probably yeah. a game that people will open packs for. I don't know about play, but, but it does the same thing where it's like yeah. two or three hollows per pack. Yeah, it's better. I mean, occasionally it's better than Magic's. I mean, Magic will occasionally give you some more rares, but they have like the collector pack. That yeah, has, like, that's fair. It, but still, like, it's still like it doesn't feel like a money. Like at least when they're upping the price, they're making the value feel better. Like yeah. even like they said the like all the the other like collector sets or bundles or whatnot that you get for Pokemon. You get yeah, an extra pack or an extra foil. To yeah, all the like yeah. the yeah. trainer boxes it. come with a promo now. And- and an extra booster. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I'm like, that's nice. okay, that's great. That at least makes yeah. you feel like it's worth getting. So, at least instead of, like, a, a mo- it doesn't feel like a money grab. Okay, that news for the packs, though, because, like, I was very much trending towards just going to buying singles only. Uh, that news makes me go, oh, maybe it's worth buying packs now. Like, Yeah, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, let's stop talking about the trading card game today. And we're going <laughs> to go ahead and kick it on over to Pokemon Go. Uh, and Shark needs to talk about it so he's prepared for next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when we get down there, the first, uh, the week leading up to it, we'll have our winter holiday event, part one. Um, no specifics yet on what is going to be there, but it's going to be um, <laughs> December 15th through December 23rd. We'll probably find out, like, after the episode launches. Or this Pro- episode. Honestly, minutes. Honestly, yes. Yeah. It may even be when we finish recording. Who knows? But yeah. Well, just, you know, there's going to be a lot of ice Pokemon coming up starting the 15th. And uh, for the Community Day, which is the 17th and 18th, uh, it'll be running from 2 to 5 every day. And you'll receive Double Catch Candy, Stardust, and Catch Experience, uh, Increased Odd for XL Candy, and 50% Egg Disc. All Pokemon will be appearing from 9 to 9 both days, but I think the big boost is that 2 to 5. Um, and the old Community Day stuff from 2021 will be in Raids and 2K. I love that, honestly, like the recap. And I can go over like what the Pokemon are. I've, that's that's the one highlighted in my color. So Saturday features the following Pokemon. Sandshrew, Alolan Geodude, Hopip, Sfeel, and Stuffle. And Sunday features Teddy Ursa, Galarian Zigzagoon, Starly, Roggenrola, Litwick and Dino. Ooh, I I love that they do these recaps though. That really, yeah, is great if definitely. you missed one or two or eleven. All right. Well, that is the uh, that is the news. But before we quit, uh, Puckle's Pokey prediction. We want to know how long do you think it's going to be before we see Charizard EX in the Pokemon TCG? <laughs> That's such a good question, though. <laughs> the an- the answer may surprise you, and it be well. The, the answer probably won't surprise you. It'll be like three sets in, but yeah, that's that's the honest answer. 
So what, that would be like, would that be in the fall or would that still be summer? That would be fall. I think the fall. I think the fall set will probably do it. I, honestly, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it was going to be fall too. I think I was going to yeah. get some time. But Well, so if I, reco- if I recall from Sword and Shield, and Seth, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you bet. They were actually pretty good with the first couple sets in Sword and Shield, only keeping two Pokemon available in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Mostly, yeah, I think so. And then they actually just like threw that out the window like a few sets in, and they just started adding yeah. any Pokemon they wanted. And <laughs> like Deoxys V Max still kind of bothers me because that's still not available in the game, but it can do uh, the Max mechanics. Sure, yes. okay. I think I think they did it right at the end on purpose so that you wouldn't catch that stuff. Oh, and I. Uh... Okay. I think we all caught it. I think we all caught I it. I think we fun. all saw. We all saw it. Yeah, there's no surprises there. But dude, yeah, they're totally just bringing Charizard. It's gonna be Dragon type too. It's gonna be a reference to the event. Ooh, yeah. yeah. No, it's gonna be Terra Dragon. I think it's gonna be the second set. I would say that there's gonna be like one Terastalize in this first set that's not the correct type, Maybe. and then they'll Maybe. start doing it more. Um, I later. I hope they do. I do hope they do Terastalize EX Pokemon that are the wrong type, as at least like a cute way to have done delta species you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i i think that'd be a cute like homage to delta species i'm very excited because this is like the first time i've been back in it for a while like as a generation's happening a new generation yeah. of cards and i really honestly i just see the potential for building a cube and <laughs> i just oh, i yeah. want to build like a scarlet violet era cube you know what i mean yeah all right well this is gonna be it for this episode or not this episode but this section of the news uh, we've gone on long enough. Uh, we are going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co host on their insane Pokemon. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark from the Dunsparce Gang, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. Thank you for that intro, and we are going to go right ahead into Puckle's Pokey Quiz. Our first question today, remember Gen 9 is available to you guys. Oh um, dear. Yup. It's going to no, be from no. Farmer Fox. What two Pokemon get the Kudachu ability? Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, I know this there's one. There's two Pokemon. What was Parograph that, Shark? Yeah. And Palladian Tauros. Yep. That is correct. That is a point. Yeah. For, there's no fun facts about it other than, like, that is true. It's it's uh, fun. It's a fun yeah. ability. I think I ran into a, a Terra Fairy Giraffe Rig on Ladder that tried to dazzle and gleam me, and you That's had the cute. citrus berry stuff. What? It tried. It, it's cute. Garchomp was still dead enough to at least chunk yeah. it down until I could KO it other, afterwards. That's so cool, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. We actually have a TCG question. For once. Oh boy. This is, oh, from, this is from that's, this is from that's for you, Seth. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Once in future gamer, in the TCG, ignoring the use of colorless energy, which Pokemon okay. line was the first to require a different type of energy card than its actual type in order to attack? Oh no. I actually um, knew this. I actually knew this. This is like a stupid I, basic question, wait, but I really like it. Excluding colorless Pokemon? Inclu- excluding colorless energy. So like this is oh. uh so this is a Pokemon oh, okay. who's the Pokemon cards type. It had it required an energy of a different type to attack. And it's the first one that did that. The first uh, one that I... did that. It did happen in like original OG era. This, so this Pokemon. Was, so you're talking. So it would be something that happened up through like fossil or base set or yeah. what? No, something like yeah. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. Dragonite. Okay. Dragonite was a colorless Pokemon. That it is a colorless sense. Pokemon. I swear it used water and electric um, energy. At least one of the versions. That's a lot of modern ones. A lot of modern ones use that combination. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, before that, um, I know Execute and Executor yeah. used, had a, it's a grass Pokemon, but they had a psychic energy. I know it used it for teleport. Yeah, that's that or like one of the Nidos was was what I was 
going towards, but I think the Nidos were what later. What did they use? Sight, uh, like, I don't think no, they because were poison psychic. was grass. No, they used they, no, they, they were been fighting. Yeah, no, they were grass energy. They just yeah, it was grass or colorless on those. Yeah, I, remember. I like the execute. I feel like that's correct, and I feel like I've seen that when I was going through the cards that I'm giving you for cube. That yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let me double check to, to make sure that that's correct because I I vaguely remember something like that, but that's not the answer that's uh-huh. written on my sheet. Um, huh. Because the answer yeah. in my sheet, I know is correct, and uh, the gold okay. duck from Fossil actually uses psychic energy. Oh yeah, okay. uh, that might have been the first so, one. I think I want to say it's from the same set. Uh, so it, it makes us from, it, I think the exit, the execute is in jungle, but I'm not oh, sure if there's uh, like a actually, release wait, order for first, sets. isn't it? That would mean we, I would. Oh, then I would be correct. Then you would was be jungle correct. We fossil? are we are going to double check real. I believe jungle was before Fossil. Yes, Seth. You're right. um, yeah, I think it would. Yeah, yeah. No, me, Executor ninety nine teleports with psychic energy. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, and it's also. Uh, let me look. Let me look. Um, yeah, jungle the, was before fossil. Yeah. I just verified. Man. Okay, so this is. Oh, the execute also uses the psychic energy. Yeah. Yeah. So we are gonna go ahead and take that. I might have asked the question incorrectly. We out questioned your uh, question. Take that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Let's go. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, that was incorrect <laughs> on the on the trivia <laughs> sheet. But, it, uh, thanks, thanks to my stupid little fun. Because uh, no, I, 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 I recall this. Play the, I recall the this video game, the yeah. old TCG video game, and I literally the deck that I'm playing in that is the the executor just yeah. coin flip, and I literally yeah. get like thirteen the, coin flips of heads or tails. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the question is technically correct if you're talking about just Pokemon types in general. Um, using an energy that's not of its Pokemon type, but I, 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 I read this in a TCG context of being like, it doesn't, it's a grass Pokemon using its psychic energy, right? Yeah, so, that's how I read it too. Uh, that's how I read the question. You can definitely tell me I'm wrong in the trivia channel on Discord. Um, <laughs> but not after we, not before we get our points. You do get <laughs> the points. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right. Your next one is your, uh, is your Pokedex entry question. As always, this one is from Rymerf. Its scarlet dex entry reads, In rare cases, it molts and sheds its scales. Medicine containing its scales as an ingredient will make a weary body feel invigorated. Who's that Pokemon? What? <laughs> Wait, repeat oh. the entry? In rare cases, it molts and sheds its scales. Medicine containing its scales as an ingredient will make a weary body feel invigorated. Who's that Pokemon? This, this do you have a thought, Shark? Because I've got one. I've got zero thoughts. You've got zero thoughts. This feels very Alamomola. That could be. That feels like a very good one, because that's a Pokemon we missed forever. That would be a good dex entry to throw and in it's, here. And it like heals and things like that. It has scales clearly seen on the new mm. model. Mm-hmm. Um, Because, um, yeah, it's better. I mean, if other fish, it would be like Finian, Luminian... I don't think it. I think a little more. Maybe even better. Love disc. Um, I um, don't. I can't think of a lizard or, or dragon that quite hits that mark. Yeah, Alteria definitely would not. not Viper. Be scaly. I I kind of like. I kind of like Alamomola. I can't think of anything else of the four hundred that really fits. Are I you like comfortable with it? Do we want to give it a shot? Yeah, I like a little mola. All right, that's what we're going with. Alola Momola is incorrect. Your next oh, entry crumbs. comes to you from Legends Arceus. Oh, okay. and there it reads, yeah, and it reads, though these Pokemon are usually of a violent disposition. When I gave one a glass bead, it had been eyeing covetously. It became, it suddenly became quite docile. Uh, uh, violent, uh, scaly Pokemon it, like, used for medicine. Okay, hold on. I like this because I the glass bead sounds so freaking familiar. I felt like it was like one of the Garchomp. Ones. Is it? Wait, yeah. Is it Garchomp? Is it Gibble? It might be Gibble. Gibble or Gabite? Because they like shiny things. <sighs> Gibble likes biting. Gabite likes collecting shiny things. Maybe it's Gabite. And that kind of brings in the whole like shark scale medicine bit. Mm-hmm. That's more fin soup, but you know it, it's same same thought. I'm good with Gabite. If you are, we can try it. I like that. Gabite. Let's do it. 
Gabite is correct. There we Heck go. Heck yeah. Um, that is correct. You're dead on the money. I would have given it to you if it was any other than the line, but uh, yes, that is absolutely correct. Yeah, you guys Gable's are, entries are usually, I bite. You guys are three for uh, three for three here. Your next question is your multiple answer question, and this one's got uh, six answers. I will give you a point for each, up to three points. Okay. Uh, or no, wait. Oh my gosh. Actually, no, never mind. We're not going <laughs> to... I mean, do you want the anime question? I'll give you the anime question. Um, I do not want the anime uh, question. Thank you. Uh, okay. Is it how, Was it new anime or old anime? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh Ooh, no! Yeah, is it, no. If it's Ash Pokemon, I could probably do, but we can do the other mm, one. Okay, I want to save this question, so like, don't get rid of it. Um, all right, this is from a Bird Trainer Fay. This one has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen answers. Uh, oh, for every five, okay. I'll give you a point. Fifteen. Okay, right, let me open a. Where's pen and pencil Let me open here? a word doc. <laughs> uh, this one is from Bird Trainer Faye. Since pressure is everyone's favorite ability, and nothing oh. would be better than giving it to a legendary, what legendary Pokemon can have it as an ability? You do get three strikes, and then you're out. Uh, okay. Dialga, Palkia, Giratina. That is Walking three. Mm, yeah, that is the three. Dialga, Palkia, Giratina. Uh, uh, Mewtwo. Yep. Mewtwo is four. Ho oh Lugia? That is six. Oh wait, uh yeah, that's six, yep. Um eh, those aren't defaulted. Those aren't defaulted. Uh those aren't I'm just kinda going through legends, like legends in gen four, legends in gen five, legends in gen Yeah, um, gen six, gen seven. Gen f- yeah, they stopped making them standard. Yeah, After they started doing other gen. I would say weird even gen. Well, I guess gen four. Uh, you guys are uh, at six. Yeah, there are Do nine the... more to go. You have one more point. Yeah, we're very good at this game. Mm-hmm. Um. Do the do the beasts have them? The legendary beasts? Oh, uh, yeah. Suicune, uh, Entei, Raikou. Raikou, Entei, Suicune. Those are nine. You guys. Are oh, up to and then nine. the legendary birds. Uh, are you are up to Dust twelve? Moltres. You are up to twelve. I think the last three you're going to have a harder time with, but I'll let you try for a little bit before uh-huh. that struggle bus. Yeah, so it's those trio, those trio. Um, those all have levitate. The the emotion sprites have levitate. Um, it's not Manif. It's not Heat Tran. It's not Arceus. Uh, dark Eye's got Dark not, Void. Yeah, not him, Dark The Eye. Musketeers don't have it. Genesect, no. Meloetta, no. It's not... Hoopa, well, is it, uh, no, Hoopa has the magician stuff. Yeah, it's got that weird one. Um, um not Volcanian, not Magirna, not Zerora. That's Leaf Guard for the other monkey. Not Zeru. What are the legends in this game? No. All right, I'm gonna no. need some kind of answer before uh, I make you guys give up. Eternatus? Eternatus? Yeah, Eternatus has it. Eternatus locked in. You guys are at 13. You're still missing two more. Um, what are the other legends from. Eight. Uh, the dogs. Calyrex has. Calyrex has a nerve. A nerve. So then it's not. And the those. horse is also. Um. And as one doesn't count. Um. At this point, we just are doing it for bragging rights. We're yeah. two off, right? You're two yeah, off. Two you guys off. got two points. You could get we a third point if you got two. the other is there two. A pa- but... Is there a pair we're missing? Then it could be. A pair? I don't, I don't so. know. A Cressel. He has levitate. Never mind. Nope. Um. Dang. Gosh dang it. What are the other. What are the other Gen Sevens? Do um, it's Magirna. No, 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 no. What it? What is uh? Oh, the the Cosmo and Cosmog. What do oh. they have again? Uh, I don't know. Those are good guesses. So let's do those two. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think so Cosmo at the very least has it. Cosmog and Cosmo locking them in. Uh, those aren't on my list. But let me double check just to be safe. Um, they may have something else weird. I don't remember. Um, and if that's the case, we're just going to move on. Um, <laughs> uh, I because I don't think you're going to get the, the other bottom two. of the barrel. Uh, Deoxys? Actually, uh, Deoxys is 14. Oh, um, yeah, Deoxys. I uh, it it's second. sturdy on Cosmo M. Oh, is it? Okay. And Cosmog. Uh, Cosmog has unaware. Wow, cute. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. All right. So we're what's the one fit? off? So if you guys don't give me the next, if you don't give me number 15 in the next 10 seconds, we're done. 
Okay, uh, Gen 3, Gen 3, Gen 3, Jirachi, Jasmus, no, uh, uh, not Heatran. Not hey, Heatran. Not that, sure, Heatran. No. Heatran yeah, is your third sure. strike Heatran. and Heatran. you're out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, the, the one you were missing was Kirim. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. I oh totally God, did skip over The reason it was him. banned. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, oh, no, right. I totally skipped so, over him in my head. I was like, Zekrom yeah. doesn't have it. Okay, next. I didn't even think yep. about it. <laughs> Next, is, but that is the only one. You guys got 14 of them, so I'm kind pretty of Pretty good for a couple, yeah, yeah, for a couple yeah. minutes. Yeah. All right. So you guys are uh, uh, five for four. So your next question is going to be your base stat question, as always. And it's oh going to come to you from the Paladin. What first form ground type has the highest base special defense? So I assume basic Pokemon. Oh, um, yeah. With the highest base. So like. Yeah, first first ground basic Pokemon with a special defense, but it can't evolve. Can't it has the capacity to, to evolve? evolve okay, yeah, got it. Okay, yeah, because I was about to say I'm like, uh, um, yeah, um, <sighs> one that comes to mind as a possibility, but I don't think it's true is Ball Toy, because um, Claydol has like 120 in both in that, yeah, or something. It's not. It's, it's definitely not. Let's see. Ground types this gen. It's not the whoop. No. Weird, specially defensive ground. There's not. Special defense is not something ground types do a lot of. This is defense, that, not special not defense. Not typically. Oh, it's defense? defense what? Defense. defense. Is that what I said? Okay. Wait, wait. You, said, you said special, special defense. defense. Oh, I did say special defense because that's what it is. You are correct. It's special defense. <laughs> okay. I was okay. Done. okay. Yeah, we have I'm to done. change that up. Yeah. I, I did. Uh, I did say special Onyx defense at that point. But okay, okay. I did say. I did say special defense. It turns out. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Back in the train. Um. Uh, back on. Back in. All, all right. right. Um. First stage. Any new grounds that would have been better than ball toy? Um. I'm just trying to think of weirdly specially defensive grounds. Honestly. You have. Him, but that's a legendary. Um, you said basic, so it wouldn't be like Gabite. I know that's not even a consideration, but it wouldn't be a middle stage. For yeah, no, mu- stage. no middle Fish stages. Dash. Yeah. Uh, you do have the hint, by the way. Uh, you do. Can you we do, still we cash it in, it, right? right? You can. So I don't think we only got. If yeah, you get it correct, if you do get it correct, if you do get it correct, but soon you're not going to be able to give me an answer. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we can just go ahead and use it for the either, sake of getting Either we go Baltoy or we use the hint. Your choice. I say we use the hint. The, hey, this is a Gen Nine Pokemon. Uh, a Gen Nine Pokemon. Okay. okay. I'm not ground cra- types okay, and Gen I'm Nine. I'm trying to think. I assumed it was Gen Nine. I'm just like blanking on ground types at the moment. What except for What's a ground? Oh, that's not. And that's that not because be Palladian Wooper does not have the special a defense. It um, could though, Palde. I don't know. It probably would be the highest. What are other right. grounds? All right, Elite Four. Who do you fight? You fight. Or you fight Rika. She has Wish Cash. She's the ground she has Claude Sire. Trying to think what other ground type she has. It could be Paldean Wooper. Like, because I don't know. I don't. I, don't know. I thought it had the same stats as Wooper, <laughs> and Wooper does not have that and good stats. I know Wooper gives an HP EV. I I know that so because I have I EV I really trained a lot of things. But let's. But I trying to think of what other ground types that she. What does we yeah. use again? Ah. <laughs> Why am Gen I and why ground. am I not thinking of any more ground types? Because right, why am I blanking? I need an answer here, guys. Is it oh, really no. Wooper's? Oh my gosh! It could be Wooper. Oh my gosh! I I'm like I got nothing. It, Do you want to just YOLO and say Wooper? I guess At this we point, YOLO what does it matter? Wooper, because I legit YOLO I'm just Paldean Paldean Wooper. Paldean Wooper is unfortunately incorrect. Oh, you have forgotten one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen Nine. Oh, Toad's cool. Oh, jeez, Louises. Oh, That's yeah. That's right. Wow. Oh, and Toad's right. cool. Ball Toy's wow. actually second like place, 90? by the way. Uh, it's 100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so it wasn't crazy. It had to... Yeah, Toad's cool makes okay. a bunch of sense. Uh, Ball Toy was second at 70. Um, and then That's good. Glory and Yamask and Gligar follow up with 65. Mm. So on that note, though, we are going to go ahead and give you guys a full five points. I'm going to find the trivia score here. Um, I think I forgot to give trivia points last week, too. I forget who was on, but... Um, yeah, I think you had some issues getting the sheet up. Yes, I did. Um, but I forget who got what, so it's all right. 
Because the points definitely matter. Um, <laughs> all right, so I don't even think this changes anything that much. So <laughs> it's a race to 40. In our race to 40, we got Linian in first place with 26 Hi. points, followed up by Seth Vila with 25, followed up by oh. Shark with 16, Sublime in fourth with 15, Mark in fifth with 14, Dr. Shamu in sixth with 13, Whimsicott in seventh with 12, Claude nine in eighth with 11. Our Sigma and Jushira are both tied for ninth with six. Uh, tune in next week for more Puckles Pokey Quiz. Uh, when Thatch won't be here. Yay. Woo. Woo. All right. But we are going to kick it on over to the topic. We have another review this week from iTunes from Boy Jeff. Amazing five stars. I just started listening this year, but I've loved it ever since. Well, thank you for that. And if you would like to hear us over the podcast, we would really appreciate it. help us out. On top of that, you might be able to be right on the show. So until then, we're going to kick it on over, guys. Welcome to the topic. Our topic today is competitive Pokemon in the video game. We are going to be talking some OU, then some VGC, and talking about what we're what what's new how things are going because the meta is still unstable i think yeah very i think even vgc is semi-unstable still as we wait for official events to take hold and a real meta to form yeah i mean the rule sets kind of dropped and we we had some assumptions on what pokemon might have been legal but they the few of those yes we thought some of the legend legal in that one but they they were not i actually really like that by the way i i like that I like the new rule set that we have for VGC, but uh, we'll we'll get there in a moment. Um, I do. Let's let's start with OU. Um, I have not played very much, if at all, OU. I am the only thing I can comment on so far is that the games have been out for like three weeks now, right? Um, mm-hmm. We uh, still have terrestrialization in the meta, which is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. I just can't believe that that's still happening because Dynamax was banned real quick in Gen Eight. No, it actually took. A couple of months for Dynamax to finally be booted. We had rolled over into the next year before oh. Dynamax was really taken over because that was part of the reason a lot of other things were banned and or broken. Mm-hmm. An example being the, oh my gosh, the ice monkey. Darmanitan. Darmanitan, thank you. I think it got banned, unbanned, and then rebanned or something, something like that. All of those things should happen, yes. But yeah, it actually took quite a while for Dynamax to really finally be decided upon. But that one was definitely one that felt broken offhand. This one is not as bad. I think some people still, we're still trying to figure out how we feel on it. But mm-hmm. yes. it's, it's definitely not like, it, I don't, I think there's definitely not the collective, we need to ban this. It's yeah. very mixed. I see. What happened, what's been happening most recently is they're, They've been very transparent, the council, on how they're going to go about this terrestrialization discussion. The council. Yeah, I know. I It sounds very fancy, but I mean, I'm just using the official term. And they've had a thread up since November 26th, so fairly quickly after the game came out, about what do we need to do here? Let's get everyone's opinion. Let's get ideas on how we go about this. If banning it is the correct action... If restricting it somehow is the correct action or if doing Uh. nothing is the correct action. And from discussion in that forum, I've made a handful of posts there myself, um, as have, I think, a couple other folks in the in the server here on Puckle. Uh, But there's been a lot of good discussion back and forth. There's been a lot of, I'll say, passionate discussion back and forth. And in the last week, one of my favorite things is the Community Pulse survey came out where they've been doing this for quite a while now. They send a survey out to everybody. They say, hey, what's your username? Have you been in tournaments? Let's get your thoughts on this, no matter who you are. And from there, we can have a quantitative look at how people feel about this. So that's been out for a while. Uh, As we record, I'm hitting refresh on the forums because it's been said that that should be coming up (laughs) any minute. So hopefully we'll see something soon. Um, We haven't yet, though. But from what Finchinator, the OU tiering lead, has said, Honestly, from those surveys, even in the surveys where it's not like posting and all that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. echo chamber sort of feel, it's still like 50-50 on action or no action when it comes to terrestrialization. There are a couple options, and one of them has received a large 
um, boost to its validity this week, which was partially due to the VGC rules. Some of the options are, you know, as far as if there is a restriction that needs to happen. We could mm-hmm. just outright ban it. No more Terra. Gone forever. Oh, you will not have it in any form. We could have some sort of restriction. Something like limiting the amount of Pokemon that can Terra, indicating which ones that can at the start of the fight. Or removing Terra Blast, because if that's deemed an issue, we can just take that out. Um... Limiting Pokemon to only being able to terrestrialize to their stab. Limiting them to only being able to terrestrialize to not their stab. There are a couple of those options that are being discussed. Um, and then there's also the option, and this is the one that I was mentioning that kind of gets a major boon to it from the VGC announcements. Revealing Terra type at Team Preview. Uh, this is one that there was a little bit of discussion on. It was kind of written off. Oddly enough, it was excluded as an option from the Tearing Pulse survey, which I questioned them on, and they pointed out that this is probably not the way that they wanted to go at the time. But now, as we kind of dropped in the news section, with the official Pokemon VGC thing being reveal all information, open team lists, things like that, including Terra type, there is precedent for that being a way to manage Terra's surprise power and overall influence on the metagame. And that is now being reconsidered as an option by the council for now. Uh, We'll keep you all posted. I'll be posting about it in the Smogon thread and things like that. So that's where we are kind of on Terra. It is the radar right now for OU. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else being actively considered because we have to get our arms around this first because we've banned the really, really bad monstrosities that are broken without it. Any bans from this point will be partially because of Terra. The thing I've seen with Terra, like there, like some of those options about, oh, ban the same type and ban not the same type, it's like, the issue with those is that there's no, the issue with Terra is not like one or the other. Like, Terra Blast is not, like, is good on certain months, but it's not good on every month. Uh, there are, like, same type ones that are pretty good, like doubling up, like, Ground Garchomp is a good option, like, just to get extra Earthquake power. Or if you went, def- like, a off-type, you have things, something like Dragonite, which is popping off, like, just being able to go normal extreme speed in. So it's like, like, those don't quite answer what some of the issues are with it. It's just more, it's the unpredictability, this 50-50 that kind of, I that can exist. If you see a Roaring Moon in front of you, is it going to double its Stab Crunch? Or is it going to Terra into a flying type and use booster energy to throw super powered acrobatics at you? So yeah, that's the question, and that's that. Since the VGC thing, the the wording that I've seen and liked in the threads is it seems like Pokemon's official like way to handle terrestrialization at a tournament level is reveal on preview. So it's got precedent there. It's kind of a if you will sanctioned way or how Terra might have been designed to be for tournament play. So Mm -hmm. it's considerations like that that are now heavily weighing into the overall discussion. Uh, But let's just go ahead and hit some of the other things that were banned. So if you all have things on your on your cartridge game, you know what you can't yes. walk into an OU game with. Yeah, and this is funny when we're looking at the Pokemon, just looking at them as we see some of like the early stuff. Like, oh, here's our predictions of like the top six Pokemon that might be banned. <laughs> um, I would say three out of the six did get banned, and we have a fun surprise that snuck in there. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. So we'll go over the three first, and those are. The big old huge superpowered things that were introduced, they are Fluttermane. A.K.A. Spectrier 2.0. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Fluttermane, Palafin, which is, you know, slacking without restrictions. Yeah, so Dracovish 2.0. <laughs> yep. And Iron Bundle, the um, Delibird form, which is dumb. Yeah, it's basically like the things that you like about like why Kiram and Weavile were getting suspect tested at the end of the generation combined. Yeah, it's the worst parts. Mhm. Freeze dry, water stabs do a bunch already, and then Terra, this is one that yeah, Terra Blast made this thing stupid because you could Terra to certain good types to get the extra little bit of coverage. Yeah. Like electric. And with, with like rain existing too, it made the really stupidly overpowered hydro pumps crazy. Uh, booster energy, you immediately have a 30% boost to everything in the rain on top of it. It was 
too much and require it was starting to feel like the whole between palafin and iron bundle you needed a water absorber on the team somewhere which you know we've all got a little bit of dracovish wounds still healing <laughs> so that one and then last but not least the fun the fun surprise of this generation <laughs> houndstone Yes. Our little ghost dog friend mm. got banned. Makes sense, though, because base 300 move when all your opponent, well, all your Pokemon are dead are just, that's insane. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is, that is not even the damage cap on that move. I know. It can go up higher. Like, yeah. it can go, I believe, to 950 base power. Oh, no, five, no, 5,000 base power, actually. Yeah, which you have to go shenanigans to really pull it off. You'd have to do a lot of shenanigans to make that happen. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely easier in cart when you have, you know, revive items, but... Yes. yes. <laughs> but now that it's a good thing that it was banned before um, Revival Blessing was programmed in, because that would have been dumb. Houndstone counts its own knockout for that counter, uh, and Last Respects is a absolutely bananas move that should never have been allowed, and especially on something with uh, Sandrush. Almost to another extent, the Annihilate Rage Fist, but like that's close. It's not as bad. I think it's like the balanced version of that move, right? Yes. It, yeah. It's like a toned down version where if you just get hit, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. it is what it is, you know? Yeah. And you can do other ways around it, like that one. You have a little bit more control over how you do it. Like you, you've got to knock it out. You got to one shot it, but whatever. There is a little bit of stipulation on the Houndstone one because they're from the data mines and things like that. We think that Basque Legion will also come in with that move. Yeah. Right now, it's only on Houndstone, so Houndstone is broken. If it's in the data, it probably is. I, I imagine the move will just get banned eventually. Exactly. I think so, because I will say this, I have played against Basque Legion in like a nat de or in a, in a draft format, and yeah, that thing is stupid, because it has, you know, because you can give it Swift Swim, which makes it like, oh, you have to hard try to do it. I built a King Gambit to be able to sucker punch it, and it clicks sub. I'm like, oh no, I'm dead. I'm like, oh, that's over. It clicks sub. I'm dead. Last respects. Yeah, so if if something else gets access to the move, they'll reconsider and that move will be looked at, but yeah. for precedent reasons. And I'll remind you, too, in early uh, game data, things like Lele, Tapu Koko, and uh, Tapu Bulu all had access to their special terrain moves like Grassy Glide, Psychic, Overload, whatever, mm -hmm. the Expanding Force. Um, they had access to those. So had we taken action assuming those would still remain true when the data dropped, we'd have to undo it. Yeah. So that no, that makes sense. Yeah. There there is precedent and there is reason that it was Houndstone and not just Last Respects. Mm -hmm. So and so the other thing that I'll throw out here is it's not just kind of OU for now. Uh as of December first, UU Alpha version was created and the first set of Pokemon dropped from OU to UU based on their usage. And here's how it will proceed. So the next couple it's every beginning of the month something else happens, so you can kind of see it's a cascade. On January 1st, UU is locked in, exit alpha, and RU, beta, uh, alpha, whatever, is created. Uh, February 1st, RU goes to live, NU alpha is created. March 1, NU live, PU created. April 1, PU. So by April, we'll have all of our respective tiers back. Things will be split how they're going to be, uh, just based on one month of usage. So right now, being, you know, a week and a half into December, we've got information for OU primarily and a little tiny, tiny bit of UU. That's still very much in its infancy. So we're mainly focusing on OU for now because that's really the only tier that quote unquote exists in its final form. Mm -hmm. So don't feel bad that we're not hitting the others, but we're hitting the one we can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's not even, like, other types of formats. No, Ranbats is still yeah. not updated yet. Cause still need more time to figure out movesets and let things settle. And, uh, so, like, there's really OU and doubles OU or, like, Nat Dex OU. Like, there's a few things like that right now, but it's, like, still very early. There's no UUs yeah. yet or barely used yet. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it a minute again. Uh, so, Shark, you've got a little bit of familiarity with OU, a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've all seen the discussions from folks like P. McGee in the forums, who has reached number one on the ladder like twice now, once in OU, once in Nat Dex. What have you seen? And maybe you too, Thatch, if you're curious, you can feel free to throw a question. I've been very attentive to this. So this is 
No, no, you've been paying way more attention to OE. I when we get to VGC, I have more words. Exactly. I'll I'll we'll switch roles at that point. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this is old Battlecast me coming out. But um, like, what's been good? What have you guys seen that's good? If anything, what do you have a question on? What do you have a prediction on? What What do we want to think about here? Well, the Pokemon that I think that are well, some to, some to look at that are very in, at least interesting and potentially radar for future uh, actions are going to be some of those uh, new le- the new legends with their ruin abilities. They are all yeah. very strong, giving like about was it was it twenty to thirty percent nerf to the stats? Twenty. It, it's twenty. It reduces. Is it twenty or twenty five? It's twenty. It's twenty. Two zero. Okay. We're giving that those those nerfs to those stats like definitely has impacted things. Specifically, you have Chi Yu being like the best of them all so far, and probably the next one to get like have some suspect on being the fire mm-hmm. the fire dark that will nerf your special defense, which makes obviously makes you know thra- slapping a specs or a scarf dark pulse or fire move just go go wild. Yeah. And I don't mean to um, sound like a, a goofball and a semantic idiot, but Thatch, it is 25. Is it 25? I thought it was 20. It is 25. Where did I get 20 from? It, it could be, we're still early. It could have been, fine. like, they could have calc it a little more preciser. First round of math was 20, but it actually turned out to be 25. Oh, is that was that what happened? That's why. Yeah, I think there's, there's still some zeroing in on what they do and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But it is 25% reduction in the... Because, yeah, I know they, like, legit, like, had to just pull damage calcs, like, in the cart for some of these things. Like, for what the Legends, the cover Legends ability, like, how much boost did they actually get? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't surprise me that, yeah, things are being updated as we go here. But, yeah, Chi Yu being crazy little fish. And then Qian Pao, not as oppressive as I th- as we thought, but, you know, Weavile 2.0 here is still very good lowering mm-hmm. defenses and being able to SD... Ice knockoff shenanigans. Mm. Yeah. Or even just choice band or heavy duty boots or anything. It's very powerful and your counters have to be like extra, extra defensive because they're 25% less effective than they should be, mm. which is ugly. And I was surprised, honestly, that Chi Yu has really become the public enemy number one as opposed to Qian Pao. I was expecting the latter, but. I guess fire and dark is astoundingly good coverage neutrally. It, it is very good coverage, but the, I I think Chien Pao is seeing more use in VGC currently. That makes sense. I I think that's the I, I think that's the consensus right now. Well, uh, the, those well when it was in the early alpha of VGC before the official rule set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before the official rule set, they aren't allowed. Yeah. VGC, but yeah. So some other things you mentioned one of the big like big public enemies, which is Chi Yu, the fire fish. Um, some of the other ones that are kind of being looked at or were being looked at, at least on the radar to some level before Terra was the discussion, mm-hmm. um, are things like Cyclozar. Yes. That one has been interesting because... Well, it's because it's got Shedtail and Regenerator. Like, they just gave it everything. Yeah, exactly. And one of those big threats is another thing that's kind of on the radar, and that is our good ostrich friend, Espothra, which is currently UU by usage for now, but now that people have kind of started to figure it out, Speed Boost, Calm Mind, Stored Power is a bananas combination. So yes. if you Terra into a type that resists common priority moves, such as Fairy, which is its most common Terra, um, you now resist First impression, you now resist Sucker Punch, so things can't stop you in that regard, and you just blow through things. Mm. But it also gets Roost, which is dumb, too. Does it really? Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, no, Roost is an option on this set, Protect is an option on this set, just because of Speed Boost. Like, yeah. Wow. Call Mine, Store Tower, Protect, Roost, Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. The other thing that was kind of on the radar before the Terra discussion was started, which might be addressed come... Uh, the decision on terrestrialization, which we're still a long way away from, is Annihilate, which, if you don't know, it's Prime Ape's evolution. It's the Ghost Fighter, and it's got a signature move that the entire line gets, but it uses it best, Rage Fist, which starts at 50 base power, Ghost Move, and for every hit that Annihilate takes, Rage Fist's base power is increased by 50 up to a maximum base power of 350, which is just wild and it makes a lot a lot of defensive teams really really struggle Mm -hmm. because of annihilate's just simple existence um because you know stall semi-stall whatever 
A lot of that is forcing damage by hazards and whittling hits that knock things down. With some clever Annihilate switching, and I'll remind you, it resists U-Turn, you can build up the power of this move to crazy levels, and it often terastalizes into a type that completely flip-flops its weaknesses, usually water. So that's another reason, like things like that, and Chi Yu terastalizing into a dark type to make its dark pulses that much stupider. Uh, Espathra terastalizing into a fairy. That's why these can't really be resolved until we have the final decision on terastalization, because these all sound really broken. I don't disagree with that decision. I mean, it's like it's like during the Dynamax discussion, right? A lot of things got banned because of Dynamax. Right. I think this is a wiser way to do it. To be fair, they've already gone through one mechanic that was already kind of stupid. Dynamax was too much. This is still at least a more balanced. Dynamax was the epitome of Game Freak going, we really only care about doubles. Yeah. Actually, very upset if they have that mentality now. Yeah. There's like one double battle in the entire game. Yeah, that's true. It really feels weird and now that you say that. I really dislike that. If they want double battles to really be the focus of their competitive play, and this is just a Thatch opinion and has nothing to do with real competitive, they really need to include more double battles. I thought it was cute yeah. when they let Raihan do it. At least there were some other double battles throughout the game but uh, in Sword and Shield, but I, I'm just like, you should have more double battles in game if this is really what you want competitive player, competitive to shift to, especially with your timer. Very much so. And especially with the way you're designing a lot of things, because Dynamax was very much so built for doubles, because it, it's much more balanced when your your partner is also getting the boosts. Mm hmm. So I, I, I don't know. I Terrestrialization, I think, is going to still be very cute. I just want to mention that Annihilate, you think like with like you think Primate, oh, it has terrible defenses or whatnot. I just want to mention it has it's really bulky. Not only does that have a decent type. But it, it's 110 HP and then 80 and 90 in its defenses. I'm like, I keep like losing to this thing as like the last mod was like when I was like very early playing OU. It's like, oh, I thought this thing would die. It's bulkier than Swampert. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, this thing is uh, in a good way. So it's not like it's going to it's it's not going to blow over in a in a stiff breeze this thing is bulkier than swamper the big bulky wall that we've had forever so you got to actually hit this thing which is what it wants you to do another thing about the annihilate too if you want to go like full full meme these counters do not reset on rage fist when it switches out so it lasts all battle these counters do not reset on fainting so if you revival blessing and bring annihilate back it's still got that counter ticking mm -hmm. <laughs> So if you want to go full meme, Revival Blessing, Annihilate, be my guest. It'll work great for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'll hate you. <laughs> so just be ad be advised of that. So the thing I'll recap with for OU before we go into the big meat, which is the VGC, um, there is still a lot to be done here, folks. That's why it's kind of still a short discussion, still very much in its infancy. And you guys have the opportunity, us as an entire community, I've said this like anytime I throw a post in Smogon, this is our choice. This is our decision as a community. If you have an opinion, absolutely go hit the OU forums on Smogon. Take those surveys when they come out. Make your voices heard because ultimately this is our game and we can do with it as we wish. So make if you have a thought, if you have an alternative opinion, s throw it up there. See if other people have it. But this is our game and you can also go and play with whatever memes you want to. It's great fun. I've been having a lot of fun. I know McGee has been having a whole lot of fun because he topped the ladder here recently. So that's OU as it is right now. And we'll be back at you here in two months with where the heck it's gone. And maybe we'll have a terrestrialization decision by then. The suspect things for that is going to be a lot longer than normal. I mean, the discussion for it has gone on for a couple weeks now. Um, the test will probably be a three-week test once it's finally developed instead of the normal two. They really want to be careful about this decision and make the right one the first time. So, yeah, that's OU. Yay, OU. VGC is fun. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not going to be able to talk for the 25 minutes like you did, but, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. so, I mean, VGC has been fun mostly because everybody started playing with the new toys and then we got the official rule set and they found out that they were wrong. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because for those of you who are unaware, um, when they first started, we didn't have a rule set, which was kind of weird, honestly. 
that they hadn't announced it, but they essentially just banned, you know, the legendaries and they also, but they also banned the paradox mons, which everybody was kind of having a blast with. Yeah, that threw me yeah. off. The paradox, yeah. And so paradox mons aren't legal. So it definitely changed a lot of things because like Golden Go is really big right now. Um, Mouse Hold, obviously, because people like to meme. Uh, the Dondozo strat is still pretty big, though. Uh, you get around, you get around a lot of this stuff with Murkrow. <laughs> yeah, Murkrow is this trio core of Hydreigon, Murkrow, and Goldingo. Goldingo just basically your special breaker to do whatever. Murkrow is is basically your whimsicott of this format, where it's got Prankster Tailwind with Taunt and Prankster Haze. Prankster Haze is the bigger one. That's the huge thing. That's why it got the use, because it shuts down this Dondozo. It shuts down Dondozo. It shuts down Dondozo. It shuts down Donzo, Dondozo, which I think a lot of people um, were not expecting. Because Dondozo was like the early strat. Everybody's like, Dondozo is the way to go. You, you give the, you, you kill the Tatsugiri and you just have fun. Plus two Omni Boost? Yeah. Yeah, you basically, oh, you, you, you either you turn your... With uh, Dragapult, your Tatsugiri to get it down to one health, bring your get your Dondozo in to eat it, and then have it Black Sludge to die, or you have it yep. yeah. Toxic Orb and just slowly whittle itself down. It actually, it actually gave uh, uh oh my gosh, Fake Coco's final evolution, Skeledurge, Skeledurge, yeah. Skeledurge. Yeah. They gave it actually gave Skeledurge relevance, uh, Dondozo. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out the best uh, Dondozo uh, counter for Hot Second was uh, was a Fire Ghost type. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which you could tear itself into fairy to resist. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. It was just very silly. It was just very, very silly. It's a wild, it's a wild thing. I just, I just thought it was very, very silly. So, fun fact too that I guess people need reminding of. Did you know that the combination of Golden Go slash Aegis Slash and High Dragon resists the entire type chart? I believe that. I can believe that. Yeah, there's a good amount that it, for sure. The tournaments are still very early though in VGC, so like things are shaping because like the tournament. Yeah, hi, yeah. It, we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean, there's not a lot. I mean, Chi Chi Yu and Chien Pao have seen a lot of play um, very early on, but I mean they they're not gonna. They, I mean they're not gonna work though, right? Like because you can't play them um, early on. So I mean maybe if they're dumb, they'll do the thing. And that's for like, these are mainly just like the kind of on cart standard ladder things. There's a couple things that we've mentioned the rules dropped. Yes. Um, I'll highlight this as well because we mentioned it earlier in the news doc. We, for official tournaments like VGC tournaments, regionals, et cetera, et cetera, those rules published on December 5th and really, really actually were noticed in red on December 9th or so. And we are moving to an open team list format, which means you will know. Yeah. Essentially, all of the details of your opponent's team, aside from their individual stats. You do have to disclose those when you fill out the team sheet, but your opponent will not know the stats of your Pokemon. So to recap what that reveals, it reveals the Pokemon species on your team, including their form. It reveals their ability, their held item, all of their known moves, their Terra type, and their level, which doesn't really matter because they're yeah, auto-leveled yeah, yeah. to 50. But that is what is revealed to your opponent in a tournament setting every time. I'm okay with that. I, I don't see why we don't do that. We should have open deck lists, too. And in TCG. I, like, I don't see... <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't see why not, right? That one I'm kind of less on because TCG is a different animal, but... Kind of, but I don't really care. I think the thing that I was most surprised by um, so far in all of VGC has been the use of some of like the new items. Yeah, because they they've like they've made a lot of Pokemon relevant and they they did my favorite thing in the entire world, which has been uh, Intimidate, I think, is finally a balanced mechanic. Yeah, especially in VGC uh, Intimidate because they came out with uh, with a new item called uh, Clear Amulet, which is not one of them they talked about. And I think it should have been one of them that they talked about. <laughs> yeah, no, we thought it was Covert Cloak was going to be the thing because of Fake Out. But no, it's no, 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 no. Clear Amulet. Clear Amulet's where it's at. Because then you can't be intimidated, so your life is better. Oh, yeah. Shield dust and clear body as an ability, or as an item, rather, is just so cool. I think that's a real slick combo. I really like it because you'll have some physical attackers that you're just like, oh, right. I guess I could put a life orb there. Yeah. Clear amulet really gives them something that I think is worthwhile. Yeah. Um, th honestly, with clear amulet, they can bring back Incineroar now, and I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. We know Lando's coming back here in a couple months, so... 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But nobody cares. It's Lando. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, Lando has fallen off in VGC usage pretty drastically. But in a world without Incineroar, because I don't think we get that back. In a world without Incineroar, you see Arcanine. That's the end. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair. I feel like people forget that before Incineroar, there was Arcanine. Uh-huh. <laughs> And it's got Snarl and things like that, a much more yes. different supportive move pool. Yeah, I mean, I think Arcanine is sometimes better than Incineroar. Incineroar was better because its uh, typing was a little bit more defensively oriented for it. Right. And it, it had a little bit more bulk than Arcanine. But Arcanine's a pretty good Pokemon on its own. Yeah. I mean, it's not seeing a ton of play right now, mostly because everybody's doing all these shenanigans to get around new mechanics. But I think once the dust settles, <laughs> you'll probably see Arcanine have a very good spot. I think so. Because, I mean, it's always good. In every VGC format where it's Arcanine um, and Incineroar is not present for Intimidate, Arcanine does really well. This happened even in Sword and Shield before Incineroar came in, like, two months later. Thanks, Game Freak. Okay. <laughs> Arcanine was actually very prevalent. There. And honestly, before hidden abilities were available on Incineroar, Arcanine, very prevalent in Sun and Moon VGC. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it just happens. Like, Arcanine's a good Pokemon that I think is probably right now being slept on a little bit. Yeah, that one I think is the big, uh, big sleeper. I think it definitely can do a thing. The big thing I think though is like the reason why it's not as used as much is because Gyarados can just run clear amulet and can be yeah. the intimidator, but also be offensive and really put a lot more pressure than Arcanine could. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I I think there's also some. I think so. This is the first time in a very long time that like Dragonite is semi relevant as well. Um, in VGC, because there's actually some fun shenanigans you can play by Terra typing it to normal and having it just like go ham with extreme speed. Mm-hmm. You can just like if you get like a dragon dance off and then you just extreme speed, like you're having you're having a good time. Oh yeah, makes sense. And normal's a good type. Like it's not a terrible type. Yeah, it doesn't have it. Ha- I mean, there's only like two resists and an immunity, but I mean you can still yeah. work around those pretty well with something like earthquake. Yes, especially in VGC, like you're gonna be fine. Yeah you're just gonna be fine like you could just run some redirection you can have you can just have a really 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 good time with oh my gosh what's that pokemon called dragonite dragonite's really good another (laughs) mention that's really weird is indeedy indeedy is the best trick user trick room user in the game right now hang on can it learn trick room yes it's with an asterisk with a big asterisk but they haven't said it's illegal they actually have ruled that it's legal at least some have, at least per some events, they have ruled that it's legal. You can get it in raids with Trick Room. And there's a TM for it. Yeah. Uh, but only on mail. But you can't get, but it can't, female can't use it normally. At least by level right. up or other one. Female can't, but I think female gets it in raids. That's, yeah, the female can get it in raids. And that's the only way yeah. you can get it. And therefore, yep. it is legal. Yes. So it yeah. is legal. Uh, yeah, there it is. Five star raid battles. It has access to. It is legal due to an error <laughs> because they never fixed it. Like the uh, like the drillber. Yeah, it is legal. Wow. Yep. It is legal until otherwise. Until they yell at us about it, but like you can literally go on the ladder with it right now. Mm-hmm. You can go on ladder. You can take it to an in person events. The yeah. judges yep. have ruled that it's legal. That is legal. All right. It is legal. Well, that's cool. But you know what? It's not. What? The expanding force user, because it doesn't have that move. Not currently, no. But the one thing that does, that actually has made some waves in Trick Room teams, is Armor Rouge. Hit me. Yes. Yeah, that thing, uh, you can, like, it can be, yeah. like, a really good Trick Room expanding force user, or you can be fun and you can have it run weak armor, weakness policy type thing, mm. get a bunch of speed Ooh. and just spam, spam expanding force. I'm glad Mega Man is doing really well. <laughs> Armor Rouge was always the better of the two. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Says you. I, I like Cerulege. Yeah, I didn't want another Chandelure with swords. I don't know. There's like a few other things. We talked about it last week, but like there's Flamigo. I, there's like honorable mentions. Like Flamigo is doing really well because it just copy stat boost because Don Dozo exists. Yeah. You've also got Mousehold because Mousehold does big damage sometimes. Uh, actually, Mousehold does two things. One, it is the big friend guard user. And so, therefore, it, you can basically do the follow me. It has charm, which you can just, you can use that as your Dondozo answer. Because if Dondozo doesn't have any attack stat, then you, it doesn't, then it's just a, just a space filler. So that's an option. Plus, you can, the, there isn't the beat up justified strat as prominent right now. But if you want to feel like that, 
you take your mouse hold, you give it the wide lens, you guarantee, basically guarantee 10 hits, and you put it next to Steel Type Annihilate. And yeah. yep, just watch that thing go crazy. In one turn, have max max power Rage Fist. Just go, go ham. Go, go, go. Mm-hmm. I love it. This is cheese. I like cheese. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like this VGC format right now. It's not as like, it. well, it's very wild right now, which I think is yeah. really cool. Garganical is a big, like, defensive bulk threat. Yeah. Is he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What you do Ooh, is you just, okay. iron. it's just iron defense, body press, salt, cure, and recover. My my only comment now is that like stall in VGC doesn't work as well right now. Um, I don't know this. So this is honestly the biggest meta shift we've seen in VGC. I think since Gen Seven. Um, like Gen Eight was pretty samey to Gen Seven. Um, but like when Gen Seven came out, Seth, I think I told you because I I remember I at least thought of you when Gen Seven VGC started <laughs> uh-huh. because what happened was during like one of the first regionals with uh, Sun and Moon active. Um, we saw I kid you not like some of the first stall teams like actually be successful in VGC and I thought of okay. you I thought of you <laughs> because they were literally doing like toxic protect stall ooh yeah. okay in VGC like that happened in VGC on stream wow yeah I vaguely remember this and I was just like oh boy I can't be- like because VGC but prior to that like gen 6 VGC was very fast it was like boom 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 yeah uh, very hyper offensive. We can't let Seth see this. Mm-hmm. We can't let him know. And then it flipped really hard to Gen <laughs> Seven. Uh, in Gen Seven, it flipped really hard. They, I mean, part of it was like Talonflame nerfs and like yeah, or I should say Gale Wing nerfs, but Talonflame nerfs. Um, and uh, it, they they really did a good job balancing uh Gen Seven. Gen Seven, like I remember VGC. What year would that be? That would have been VGC twenty seventeen. Um, was like very balanced in that. A lot of like a lot of different teams showed up, and I think we're going to see something very similar here. Um, where the first, the, I mean, San Diego, I think is the first VGC tournament, and I think you'll see a lot of different teams. I think you will see a lot. Um, some of it's going to be some of the stuff we talked about, like the Golden Go and uh, things like that, and the Murkrow. You'll see a lot of that. Don Dozo, you'll probably see. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some other weird things, right? Uh, like Palafin's still gonna show up too. Like, yeah, that thing still is your big bulky. You're, you're not big bulky. You're big, hard hitting water type. Um, Annihilate is uh, in VGC. Aside from being that little, that you know, Rage Fist set, it is a fast final gambit. Oh yeah, with a hundred and ten, a hundred and ten HP yep. that kills basically everything in VGC. Yeah, yes. except maybe Don Dozo. But even then, Don Dozo would be at like what you know, ten percent HP at most. So yeah, something like. Good mm-hmm. luck with your boosts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take a minute to throw out one last thing about the home stuff. If if we have the to... yeah, do it real quick. We can we can do like five yeah. minutes on it. So this this also applies to OU, which is why I wanted to throw it out there. Part of the rules that came out are that when home becomes available, you'll be able to use Pokemon that you have imported from home. In, in v- v- official VGC competitions, by the way, like for the yes. clarification, these are official rules VGC. This is where I'm going first, and then I'll see. Then I'll tell you how it touches OU. Um, the stipulation it says is Pokemon may make use of any move or ability available to that Pokemon through normal gameplay. This is included but not limited to hidden ab- hidden abilities if available and moves and abilities made available through an official Pokemon event or promotion. In prior rule sets, there was something to the effect of this Pokemon must have the you know in Galar mark or the battle ready mark for it to be legal in competition. That stipulation is gone. There is no longer any requirement for a battle ready mark or a raised in Paldea mark Mm -hmm. on the Pokemon. So presumably the Pokemon you import from home will just automatically be available to use for VGC. What this tells us as a community is that the thing that I have been saying and praying for for months now, which is a move set reset upon entry into Scarlet and Violet, is all but likely. This is very exciting. There is no NPC that does a battle ready mark or anything like that. So if you bring in your Hippowdon that knows Toxic from a prior gen through home, it will lose access to that move and reset itself to its level up move pool at the level that you import it. We are not going to be able to have Pokemon with moves from prior gens. 
which means this also affects Smogon metagames because their rules and things about like that with moves and things like along those lines, they have to be accessible to the Pokemon on cart for them to be used on the official Smogon ladders. Yeah. Nat Dex, notwithstanding that it's its own thing and it has different rules, but on regular Smogon ladders, OU, UU, etc., etc., they have to be what can be reproduced on cart, which with these VGC rules basically telling us without saying it, there's a moveset reset means that the lo- knockoff and toxic and roost and all that distribution is going to be what it's like in Scarlet and Violet. Mm-hmm. Their level up moveset, their TM moveset and things like that. You won't be able to bring in old Pokemon. R.I.P. Soft Boiled Clefable. R.I.P. Roost High Dragon. They are gone. Our defoggers are nerfed. This is like the best thing. This is the best thing, actually. It is. I'm very happy because this needed to happen for... Uh, it just needed to happen last gen for OU, like OU specifically. Uh, agreed. Because it's just too much, especially like... Let, let's imagine a world where it's reasonable to play OU on cart. I know it's a fantasy, <laughs> land, but like, let's let's imagine that for a second. You can go ahead, you can play OU on cart. People are very happy. Um, and But right now, it's just like insane. Like, if you want a soft boy Clefable, oh my gosh, the hoops. You've got to go back to Gen 3 Fire Red and Leaf Green. I think I can maybe, can I get in a Let's Go? Maybe I can get a Let's Go. No. Um, those games, those games no. exist. It is only like Fire Red, Leaf Green okay. era. It's a tutor there, and you have to transfer a soft boy Clefable all the way up from there. Yeah. Well, not anymore. It's gone. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, it's. It, I'm so glad that things like this are just ending. Yeah, and it's not to say that the moves will be completely gone, like, in terms of, like, they'll still be, like, we're still, I think, based on what we kind of have researched and know about how home stores things, it should still be on, like, if you transfer it back in the home, it'll still have that toxic hip out on mentioned bringing into uh, Scarlet and Violet. Like, it just still, it shouldn't, like, co- totally be gone, gone, so you can, you can transfer your, like, yeah special event Victinis that or your Pikachu with hold hand, you know, things like that. Like it just won't be in Scarlet and Violet having those moves. It'll be in home holding those. Which could make things which could evolve into, you know, a new meta itself, honestly. Like a home meta versus like just Nat Dex OU. That's essentially what Nat Dex kind of is. Yeah. If it was available to a Pokemon at any point, it's available in Nat Dex. Yeah, though you though I would think more uh, Nat Dex would would imply like your Toxic Hippowdon can learn like a spe- like a new a new Gen Nine move, but in reality you can't reproduce yes. that. So it just may have separate move sets per game. Nat Dex has like no rules. Nat Dex is a meme tier held together by spite. <laughs> I don't. I'm not going to disagree with you because the only reason it exists is because we were mad at Dexit. And we just wanted our things back, so we made our own Wild West version with rules that are barely held together with spit, tape, and prayers. So I agree that, that is what Nat Dex is. I think it could lead to a developed a developed home tier, which is just whatever you can make in home. It is- could do. Could be. But we'll see. Yeah. That one. But yeah. We'll see for sure. But I'm so ha- but I am happy about that. That way you just don't you can just fo- like at least for, you know, competitive. Yes, you can now just make things easier on your life and just focus on what's in Scarlet and Violet. Not everything needs access. Not yeah. everything needs access to toxic, knockoff, roost, yeah. things like that. Not everything needs that. No, I agree. I agree. But it's happening, folks. We they basically have said it without saying it. It's happening. All right. I think this is a good uh, stopping point because we've talked yeah. about a lot of things that are happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think this is a very exciting meta. I don't know. Like, it's from a VGC perspective. I'm fired it's up. It's very exciting. Um, I still, like, I hate how unstable the U is, but that's a personal problem. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it, it's going to be like, oh, I got really good with the terrestrialization. Oh, we took that out. We'll, we'll see. But on that note, guys, uh, we're going to kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you on the flip flop. <laughs> Episode. Welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 934, because we have those now. Uh, Garganical, the rock salt Pokemon. At Scarlet entry reads, Garganical will rub its fingertips together and sprinkle injured Pokemon with salt. Even severe wounds will promptly heal afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. Garganical. I, I still like as a scientist. I Well, I wish... I don't know. Like, I like... I like 
Knackley, and I like Nagelstack, but Garganical, I'm Garganical, like in design, I'm almost to the point where I'm just like, so we did a Colossal again, huh? And this is a Minecraft Pokemon. What are you talking about? It's a Golem. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, I think it's still better. I still think it's better than I love him than Colossal because because at least they weren't just like hyping train. Right on with a hat. <laughs> yeah, and then they're just like right on's wearing a hat now. Ha ha ha. And just this like, is its own thing. Yeah, this at least it was thematic. Yeah, it was. It continued to be thematic. It did become Minecraft though. I love him so much. He's my beautiful salty son. He is my. He is a very cute Pokemon. I don't know. I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, and I mean, his, his stats are pretty good. You know, base one hundred HP, base one hundred attack, base one thirty defense. So he's bulky. That's the big one. Yeah. Special defense ninety. Special attack doesn't exist. Neither does its speed. And. Uh, I mean, and it gets the salt cure attack. Is that what it's called? Salt cure? Salt cure, yes. Yes. Yeah, salt cure is its signature attack. Which I think is very cute because it does extra damage residual to water and steel type yep. Pokemon. Which are two things yeah. that, that want to switch in on this. So Yes. Exactly. I love it. I love it. it, it this Pokemon is so cute. The Pokemon is so cu- such a cute idea. I'm so happy that this generation gave me two rock types that I'm in love with. Finally, I can fill out my chart, except for the ice one. I still have to decide. Chien Pao. Gross. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's going to be Arctivax, but that's for a different conversation. I will say, Garganical might be an argument to re- when we redo revisit some of our old tiers. That one might have an argument to sneak in, but we'll wait and see. I think the next, I think the next top five episode is definitely going to be... Uh, is definitely going to be us just taking the ones we've already done and seeing if we want to augment any of them with some of the new Pokemon. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what it's going to be. There's a lot of rock types that could be good for that now. Yeah. yeah it, well, we're just going to take all of them because we've done only like five or something so far. So mm-hmm. we'll go ahead and just break it down. But yeah, okay. We've got a team though. Uh, this team is OU um, and it is, for, is from P. McGee. Yeah. Friend of the show. This is actually the one that he used like this is the final version that he used to get to number one on the ladder, so it functions, folks. Go give it a whirl. Maybe better on the highest of ladders, but it's still very good. Absolutely, and he's mm-hmm. gone through several iterations. We've been talking back and forth about like what's good, what's not. Here's this team, McGee. Please tell me, convince me to stop using Tinkaton, like things like that. Convince me to stop using Tinkaton. It's very easy. <laughs> Tinkaton, not good. Don't do. Uh, it still hits hard like a Steel type. So I uh. I clamored and and cried to get Garganical for this team review, so I'll go ahead and start with him. Uh, We've got my beautiful son, Garganical, holding leftovers. The ability, of course, is Purifying Salts, which, if you don't know, number one, gives you immunity to status conditions. Mm -hmm. Can't be poisoned, can't be burned, can't be whatever. Number two, gives you a Ghost Resist. That is what the ability Purifying Salt does. Immunity to status and a ghost resist. The ghost Cute. is a bonus, but first part is stupid. The amount of times I've seen yeah. people try to burn it and cry right? afterwards. Or toxic it. Mm-hmm. It feels a lot like Water Bubble, where it's like, it does this. And also it does this. Both of these are very lethal. So, uh, But anyway, its Terra type is Water. And its EVs are as follows. Maximum HP. 228 special defense and 28 speed. I believe that 28 is to be able to outrun things like a Toxapex and a couple things trying to outrun Toxapex. You can drop a little more if you want to outrun Gastrodon, but who cares? It's got a careful nature and the move set of Salt Cure, Iron Defense, Body Press, and Recover. Very standard. You Salt Cure a whole lot, especially when Steel and Water types are what you predict to come in. Because it does 25% residual damage instead of 12.5 like it normally does. And cool thing to note on that, Garganical does not need to stay in for that to keep going. And it does not have a time limit. It will just keep ticking for as long as that Pokemon stays in. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Iron Defense to boost Body Press's power, go to town. And this is what McGee said he terastalized most often with because Mono Rock is cool in some situations but real bad in others especially in a world where Golden Mm -hmm. Go is the number one Pokemon. So with water, you flip-flop your weaknesses to a very good defensive type, you resist Make It Rain, and with Purifying Salt, you resist Shadow Ball. You are a non-Thunderbolt Golden Go counter when you terrestrialize, and it's fantastic. So 
Moving on to the next thing, we've got public enemy number one. We've got Chi Yu holding a choice scarf. Ability is, of course, Beads of Ruin to make it more lethal. Terra type is Psychic, and EVs are 252 special attack, 4 special defense, 252 speed with a timid nature. Just very simple vanilla max speed, max attack. And moveset is Dark Pulse, Overheat, Flamethrower, and Psychic to go with that Psychic type terrestrialization. Ryu. Woo! Chiyu is lethal. Mm-hmm. Chiyu's good. Chiyu good. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll let you go, Shark. All right. Uh, next up, we have Azumarill, uh, holding the Citrus Berry with huge power as his ability. Uh, 252 HP EVs, 252 attack EVs, 4 in speed, and adamant nature. Uh, its moveset is Aqua Jet, Liquidation, Play Rough, and Belly Drum. Obviously, if you can sneak this in and get the belly drum off, it does a lot to break your opponent's teams. Uh, this is also a good switch in into uh, Qian Pao as well as Qian, uh, as Qi Yu as it resists both of their stabs. Uh, but you probably want to be breaking with this more often, so you don't. So you just use it sparingly to sponge those hits. But you know. You kind of do what you need to do, depending on the situation. So it's a good, it's still very good, and uh, and yeah, it's your kind of fairly standard uh, bulky Azu sweeper. So, mm-hmm. um, and then this team doesn't really have hazard removal, but it does have a good way to kind of keep that in check with Hatterene, uh holding leftovers with the ability Magic Bounce, so that way you can be able to. Switch in, use this to lead against uh, uh, Great Tusk, who would normally stealth rock on entry, which you can kind of at least keep that in check. Uh, its terror type is fire, um, uh, 248 HP, 252 defense, 8 special attack, uh, bold nature, uh, with calm mind, draining kiss, psy shock, mystical fire. So Mm-hmm. This team needs uh, at least to have a pseudo, like this, you use Hatterene kind of as your counter lead to Great Tusk, or kind of as your kind of worst case out towards something like Espathra, who would you can call Mind in front of, and potentially sweep with this thing. Um, but yeah, just kind of be able to, or, and you call Mind up, so then you can Psy Shock through Espathra's you know, set mm-hmm. set up shenanigans. So, but yeah, no, this is still a pretty good. You know, it's gotten it's still nice, bulky fairy that will do what you needed to do on this team. So, mm-hmm. uh, so we also have uh, Dragapult because we can never be gone from the fear that is Dragapult, and it's very good. It is just a good Pokemon. This one's Choice Band Infiltrator. It does have the Terra type for Ghost, so that it can go to Ghost type if necessary. Um, 252 attack, 4 special attack, 252 speed, hasty nature, running Terra Blast because it's honestly just a better version of Shadow Ball um, in this case. Yes, but physical. Is it physical? Is Terra Blast physical? It's either or, depending on what... It's either or, right? Yeah, yeah, but in this one, it's physical, which your other physical option on Dragapult is Phantom Force. Yes. I wonder why he did hasty and one EV in special attack. Oh, it's pro- uh, it's, oh, it's 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 it might be special until you Terra. Yeah, it's Terra Blast is messed up. Terra Blast auto defaults you to counter considered a special move, uh, so it probably shouldn't be hasty. This should be uh, adamant. Was it uh, Jolly? Jolly, 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 Jolly. It should be yep. Jolly. Yep, 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 yep. So we'll fix that in the paste. Yep. We've also got Dragon Darts, because Dragon Darts is good. It's a good move. I don't know. Like, what do what you want me to tell you? It breaks sashes, and it uh, hits hard. And fairies are kind of few and far between right now. Yes. Sucker Punch is out there, because Sucker Punch is, again, good move for priority for Dragapult. And you turn because you're a choice user, choice item user, so you got to get out some days. Um, the final Pokemon on here is a newer one, Sandy Shocks, with the Salt Vest, with the ability Protosynthesis, which is... Both complicated and also the better way to do beast boost. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because essentially Paradox Pokemon are just ultra beasts. And they just made a... It, I like Protosynthesis. I think it's a lot better for the Paradox Pokemon. Um, it, because in harsh sunlight, or if you're holding a booster energy, which is an item that you can get in the game, um, the highest stat of the Pokemon other than HP is increased by 30% or 50% if the status speed 
um, which is very cute. I like that a lot better than Beast Boost, um, mm-hmm. but it is it is very cute. Um, so I yeah, I this doesn't really use that ability to be fair. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really use unless like your opponent for some reason decides to run Torkoal. It doesn't really use it. Uh, but uh, Sandy Shocks is pretty good at countering things like Chi Yu or even Iron Valiant. Um, it, it's holding an assault vest. Uh, the Terra type is flying because it's honestly really good to get around other ground type moves. Um, two fifty two special attack, two fifty two speed, timid nature, um, and it, it's honestly what you'd expect from a Magneton, but with Earth Power. And uh, I'm, I'm being honest, though, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Volt Switch, Earth, uh, Thunderbolt, Earth Power, and Flash Cannon, and it takes out all the things I just said it takes out, and it does them wonderfully. So uh, this team's been fun. I've played a couple matches on it while we were like doing stuff for the show, just to see if I get a feel for it. Um, and it does work. Like, it does feel pretty good. I mean, I'm not very familiar with the OU landscape right now. And I'm pretty sure the people on low ladder where I am at right now do not either, <laughs> uh, based on a lot of the things that I have seen. Um, so uh, I, I guess I understand it more than they do. Mm-hmm. I guess I can say that. But mm-hmm. it's uh, it, it's very fun to play around with. And I think the team is like surprisingly straightforward as well. Yeah, yeah honestly. Uh, the team is surprisingly straightforward. So for like being a high level team, I think it's very straightforward to play it. Yeah. With something like Chiyu and Pult, just like those are, yeah. you know what to do with them. You either click U turn with yes. Pult or you kill things. And with Chiyu, you just click the super effective button. Exactly. And then you have exactly straight up bulky things. So the only thing would be playing around with hazard control, but Hatterene, I think, should be able to, you can hopefully predict right and use Hatterene to deal with that. Mm hmm. Uh, I would say we'd give this same way to uh, patrons, but we're still waiting for a Sysbot update. So it does not exist yet. <laughs> uh, but we are still giving out those ditto if you're looking to it. And if it, we still have to wait for Sysbot, maybe this team will be given out to some people like one night this week. Ooh. Uh, we will We will see. If, if Worst case, maybe just the Garganical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe just the Garganical. I don't want to make a promise for six trades. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to kick it on over, guys, to uh, to the mailbag. Sending your emails. Mail. Welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where you can send us an email at pucklepodcast.gmail.com and we might write it, read it on the show. We typically have a mailbag question for you guys to answer. Last week, we asked you guys what your top five Gen 9 Pokemon were. Or top Gen 9 Pokemon were, since that's what we covered. This week is obviously going to be, uh, what do you think of competitive Pokemon so far? Are you excited or are you not? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but before we begin, of course, this episode of the, or this segment of the show is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. 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 <laughs> but yeah, like I said, this week we asked you guys what your favorite Gen 9 Pokemon were, and we've got three emails for you guys to, that we're going to go through, and then uh, of course everybody else will be on the Discord server later. Um, our first one this week is going to be from Bear, and I believe, uh, whatever his name is, Seth Vilo has it. That's me! That's me! All right. <clears throat> hey, Puckle Crew, I have to agree with you. This generation is very middle design-wise. Nothing too terrible, but also very few outstanding ones. They're correct. How dare you? <laughs> anyway, but let's go to my favorite, Quackwaval. I absolutely hated Quaxley, and while my love for Skeleturge is still strong, I gotta give it to the duck. This fabulous design alone has turned my whole opinion of the Quaxley line upside down. I, in fact, adore Quackwaval, and therefore I have to crown it my favorite. It redeemed something I felt so strongly negative about. And the bottom is Shrewdle. It's got the same problem that Spidops has. It ha- it and his evolution seemingly have no connection. I knew about Grafii through trailer, but until Shrewdle evolved, I did not realize that the two were related. That is bad. I could tell they were related. I just thought it was dumb and didn't need to exist. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it, they're very different species. <laughs> if Shrewdle can become Grafai Eye, why do we even have Pokemon lines to begin with? Everything might as well just evolve randomly from Eevee. I mean, I'll point you towards Remoraid and Octillery. I think that there's actually like a story behind that, though. 
Yeah, they're weapons, but... Well, not that they're just weapons. I don't think that it was originally supposed to... I don't think the evolution was supposed to exist uh, between them, but somebody decided that it was going to. Fair fair enough. Either that or they weren't really... I don't know. It's kind of like how like the Venomoth Butterfree thing, conspiracy theory. You know? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, that's fair. Keep it on going. I also hate Poppy. Might as well throw that in here. Poppy and Shrutal could be erased from the game with no impact whatsoever. In my mind, Grafii is a single-stage Pokemon, and Poppy was an accident in all ways. This sentence can be interpreted. Oh, wow, that escalated a bit. Oh, well, thanks for reading. Have a great day. Bear. All right. Well, thank you for that, Bear. Our next Whoa. email is going to come from Farmer Fox. Hey there, Puckle. Uh, Farmer Fox writing in again to give you my thoughts on Gen 9. I've been loving it so far. I've played a lot due to me having a quad bike accident just before the game came out where I... Oh, gosh. Yeah, uh, where I fractured my sternum in two places and also one lip, rib. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I had had to lie in bed full of painkiller playing Pokemon. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oof. At least it sounds like he's doing all right now, so... I guess he can type an email, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, first, the bad things, lag, blah, blah, flame rate, blah, blah. Now, on to the good. The open world is awesome, the characters are well-designed and mostly fleshed out, and the stories are incredible, particularly the end game. I feel so sorry for Arvin, or Arwen, as a lot of people call him. He has mommy-slash-daddy issues and a dying dog. Give the kid a break, you freak. <laughs> okay, BT Dubs, like, he is just, like, one of the saddest characters they've ever made. Yeah. He is! And they try to make jokes about it all the time. And I'm like, no, I genuinely feel sorry for him. Please stop. Right? I think it's worse than, like, N in terms of having parent issues. R yeah. Yes. And that one was bad, but this one's no worse. This one's well well written parent yeah. issues. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So on to the topic. A couple of honor men honorable mentions first. Uh, Tauros. When I first saw him in the opening scene in the game, I was thinking dark or fire. So when I managed to catch him, I was shocked by him being fighting type, as I always thought we would get uh, get a Minotauros evolution. Uh, then I saw a random trainer oh. send out a different one to mine, so I jumped to Cerebi and had to look at being careful avoiding spoilers and saw the three different breeds, which is a farmer he loves, as there are so many different breeds of cows, but they're all the same species. Makes me think, though, why were Tauros bred that way? Another honorable, honorable mention is Mabostiff, but particularly Arvin's Mabostiff. He's the greatest character in Gen 9. I don't... <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, no, I, it's, that's a valid argument, for sure. Uh, for my actual favorite new mons, I really like Kilo Watchroll. It's a simple yet sleek design, and I really like its core eye. And I've enjoyed... That is also correct. Kilowattrol, I think, is, in terms of regional birds, one of the best regional birds. It's good. I've enjoyed it. It's one of the best. It's like Talonflame level good. Yeah. In terms of design and fun. Yeah. And for what is an essentially an island, a bunch of seagulls everywhere, makes perfect sense. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and I like using, I've used it a bit in VGC as just like a focus, like a, as a focus sash. Uh, tailwind, but then using wind power to either boot, like, so Ooh. either I click in, I can either click Endeavor to get the thing down to low HP, or use Electro Ball to just, like, it almost Oko's Dungozo with the boosts because of Tailwind, wow. Electro Ball, plus speed stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I know it's controversial, but I like Relor a lot purely for its shiny, which I hope to catch soon as its Dung Ball <laughs> changes to gold, so I will name him Tywin. Oh, it turns out uh, the Pokedex entry says that the Dung Ball is actually the Pokemon. No, it's the baby. It's its baby. What? It's an egg. No. Yes. No. I, I'll believe you for now. I'll believe you for now. <laughs> a couple of my least favorites are Squawkabilly, just because it's the worst version of all the other normal flying mons we have. It has Guts, which is worse Swallow. It has Sheer Force, which is worse Bravier. And Intimidate as the worst Staraptor. We have all those birds at home. <laughs> So I think we're both right, Seth. <laughs> According to the Pokedex entries, I think it's very vague, but I think we are both correct um, in that the psychic typing definitely comes from the egg. Um, because So the Scarlet entry says, because you played Violet, so I understand why you believe that and why I believe what I believe um, based on the versions we played. Because in Scarlet, it says the body that supports the ball barely moves. You're talking Rabska, not Relor. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah. The other least favorite is Spidops. It has sticky webs and interesting protect move that lowers speed, but that's all it has. Its speed is so low that most things will outspeed it 
anyway, even after the drops. It's sad, but I was spe- expecting something a huge spider to come from t- Tarantula. Thanks for reading my thoughts. Catch you on the flip flop, Farmer. Well, thank you for that. All right, we've got one more today to wrap up this show. It's going to be from LP Cut Zero. Hey, Puckle Crew! I imagine that's how he says it, because it's much larger in font than everything. Hmm. Listening to your top and bottom picks when you say them together, you can definitely yet tell, yep, those are all great, or yeah, those are all the best. Doxbun will forever be my favorite Pokemon. Growing up, we had a Doxian named Co- Cooper that passed away this December at 17 years old. He was a good dog, and making my parents his NPCs in my ROM hack so they will be reunited with him. Nice. My wife and I have a Doxin named Annie that looks like the shiny coloration. That's also nice. Doxbun's ability is great, and its moveset is decent to rotate around to see what works best for you. I wish its HP stat was better, though, but it'll do. She stayed on my team since Lost Plat- Plateau, so was the MVP in a lot of situations. I know the other emails will more than likely consist of spied up co- skill villain as their <laughs> bottom pick, so I really want... All right, so I want my spotlight of shame to fall on it. Da-dun, sparse. Da-dun. Um, I know a lot of people love it just being a larger and derpy version of myself, but my host was for something cool and instead I got trolled. Now, honestly, okay, <laughs> this is Thatch speaking now. That's what I love about it. I love it because it was a troll, it, like 100%, because like people kept asking for it, and there was like a large con- contingency of the Pokemon community that's just like, it doesn't need it. It's like one of those Pokemon that's just caught to be dex filler and to be hard to catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like the one uh, percent mons in the wild encounters. Like it was meant to exist for that reason. You want more Dunsparce? We'll give you more Dunsparce. Quite literally, you get more Dunsparce. The Dunsparce. <laughs> the Dunsparce. And I'm okay with it. Like I, I mean, I think it's very silly, and they should keep it that way. I know some people lo- love it for being just a bigger derpy version of self, but my hope was so high for something cool, and instead I got trolled. Uh, at first, you won't notice any difference with the evolutionary line of Palmy. That That's very right? true, though. It's awful. I hate that they did that. Game Freak really said, the people have been begging for the Dunsparce evolution, to f- uh, for Dunsparce to finally get an evolution. Let's let's completely troll them, because we didn't have any intention of ever giving it an evolution. That's what they said, yes. Uh, uh, to sum it up, dum dum. The gen is full of home runs and a few letdowns. Surprisingly, I noticed a, a going back to basics. What I mean is it's is it just a flamigo, a parakeet, dung beetle, and dolphin? Okay, the dolphin evolves into Superman, so that I don't think that counts. But <laughs> it's a balloon animal. Simple designs of things the fans have asked for are creatures that make sense. What are your thoughts? I don't think that's going back to basics. I think every game has that to some extent, right? Like it felt like a little more this one. I mean, you have a. I think what he'd say is like this is the difference between Centiscorch and Flamigo. Centiscorch is a centipede on fire. Yes. Flamigo is a flamingo, full stop. So I think that's what more along the lines. It kicks really good compared yeah. to real flamingos. He kicked good. He his ties his neck in knots because he's a balloon animal. Yes. And he stands like a yard display. So it's great. But it's like one thing Pokemon. Okay, but if you look at like Gen 1 Pokemon, it's kind of the same thing though. For sure. Yeah, which is what he's saying. Go back to basics. Did we have a regional rodent this time? Did we actually have a uh, proper- mouse hold? I don't know that it counts because it's like, I mean, like two stage, you know, like a young goose. That would be, that's the Lechonk, but it's not a rodent. Lechonk. It's not a rodent, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hear me out. And this is a dumb argument to be having right now because this is very pedantic. (laughs) I would argue that Lechonk does not fit that role because Wulu filled a similar role to that. But Gen 8 did still, uh, did still introduce, uh, not Wulu. Um, who was it? Oh my gosh. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I believe it introduced a not Wulu. Uh, Greedent. Greedent. That right? line. So you squub it and greed it. Oh, yeah. That one is the rodent, I'll concede. The way I make Lechonk is I say Lechonk is the Wulu equivalent, right? It's not the it's not the Squibber equivalent. I think Tandem Mouse is our regional rodent. Tandem Mouse might be right. Tandem Mouse might be right, but I, I still don't like it. All right. To give you an update, all your suggestions uh, and those donated Pokemon cards and plushies made to the children's home Christmas party a huge hit. We were able to give the surplus to other kids. The Puckle community came through for the young trainers. Thanks again to everyone. The Puckle community is awesome. My wife and I will be staying in touch with these young trainers uh, and have been invited to their soccer games. They've asked me to catch Pokemon on Pokemon Go while they play. I love where their priorities are. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, see you all in the streams and discord. Smell you later. LP cuts. Well, we appreciate that, my friend. We really do. Uh, that is it for our mailbag. If you want to email us about uh, what you think of the current state of competitive video game Pokemon, 
We would love to hear it. Send it into pucklepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can, of course, uh, email us about literally anything else on your mind. We will probably read it because next week, I guarantee you, we do not get nearly as many emails. Um, unfortunately, I will not be on the show next week. Neither will Seth. Nope. Neither will Shark. Neither will Shark. Neither will Shamu. Nope. We will all be at Arlington together. We will be in Arlington and there Woo! will be an episode with that. I think this is the last episode I'm technically on on. Wow. Yeah. Right. So happy holidays to you and your 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 loved ones. Woo. I mean, we'll technically have the Christmas episode that we haven't recorded yet. So yeah, but I hope you guys have a good time. Hopefully you guys enjoy the the Christmas special that we put out. I think that one's going to, I'm going to release it a little early so it actually comes out on Christmas. Mm-hmm. That way people can enjoy it on Christmas. Well, I'm going to put enjoy mm-hmm. in heavy quotes, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and if you want to keep up with us throughout the holiday season and through until the next episode, you can always do so by going to our Discord at PuckleDiscord.com. You can, of course, also Follow us on social media at Twitter until it dies. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can always check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast uh, and over at YouTube at youtube.com slash uh, Puckle Podcast. Both those we stream it. Uh, the YouTube actually gets a couple extra things every once in a while. You can also uh, help support the show over at our Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. Everything we do over there, we really appreciate. So without further ado, I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been Seth Milo. I've been Shark Finnegan. Here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing. <laughs>